Hello and welcome to another episode of Diplo Strats. I'm here once again with Ezio. Hi Ezio. Hello, hello. And we're doing a tournament commentary today. It's been a little while since we did one of these, right? Last one was World Championships, I think. Uh, well, we did our tournament. That counts. Well, okay, yeah, fair enough. That That is true. If you um, want to join the next Diplo Strats Gauntlet? I just <laughs> right. Yep. Join the Discord server below if you want to be involved in, in our own tournaments. But the live ones always feel a little bit different. Anyway, this is like Olympus Season 2. Um, it is the probably the biggest uh, like text-based diplomacy tournament at the moment. Um, I have just realized that my uh, like map is in the wrong position on the screen. Excellent. Let me just change that. There we go. Okay. <laughs> and this was the grand final, which actually happened a little while ago. They're already partway through season three, which Ezio is playing in, fun fact. Um, but... We... Oh, yeah, definitely. It's a very <laughs> fun experience. Fun for everyone. <laughs> we are finally getting around to commentating their last finals. So in this game, we had the following players. We had Jordan Connors in France. You may know him instead as Conk. He has recently started going by his actual name. Um, he's been in a lot of these former commentaries. Uh, Riaz in England, again, been in a lot of our commentaries uh, to date. Ewok or Village Idiot um, in Italy. Uh, Josh O, who I don't know if I've seen in a previous commentary, um, is in Russia. Bradley, who also goes by Grayson and won the last Olympus, I think. <laughs> he won either that or the Hidden Attack, I don't remember. Um, but he is a very good player as well. Uh, the Austrian player, uh, it looks like Lair. I think it's actually pronounced Lar Lari? Um, Lauri? That was it, uh, from what I recall. Um, and Volpez in Germany. Uh, so those are our players here. They will be playing a game to 1912 or earlier if someone decides if the whole board decides to concede, and the winner is simply the player who has the most supply centers at that point. They use Paris method for country select, um, and they selected their powers in the order you see on the right of the screen right now in the power rankings. So France first, then England, then Italy, then Russia, then Turkey, then Austria, then Germany. Um, and the tie break is just that in reverse order. So Germany has the best tie break, then Austria, then Turkey, and so on and so forth. Super interesting, actually, that Germany got picked last. That's a very, very rare thing in these tournaments, eh? <laughs> yeah, Germany is usually a relatively popular pick um, on these top board scenarios. But these top board scenarios are so weird, and there's so much metagame going on. That. I, I wouldn't think too much about it. Yeah, I think there's definitely a correlation between the fact that France and England were picked first and second, and Germany was picked last. Maybe those players are, like, known for working together or something. Uh, yeah, that would be really funny. <laughs> yep. Anyway, uh, going over to the board, we've got our Spring 1901 up here. Ezio, is there anything that stands out to you? It's a 1901. I think, again, it's, it's somewhat surprising at how bog standard it is. <laughs> Everyone doing normal stuff. There's not. There, there's a couple of non standard moves, right? We've got. All the, right. Uh... Smyrna to Syria. Fine. Smyrna to Syria looks weird. Yes. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't, it doesn't do anything. It's the same thing as holding. It just looks funnier. <laughs> I think it. Well, yeah. Okay. So it is in part holding, right? I think I've heard people say that this is generally to dissuade a Lepanto to say to Italy, hey, I am going to keep this army here no matter what, and it is going to be ready to block your Lepanto if you come into Eastern Med and try and convoy anything over, right? So, that's the general idea, you're trying to use the army as a diplomatic tool, but yeah, it's functionally identical to holding it, it's just putting it in a slightly worse position um yeah it, in fact it's slightly worse because if you want to go for the classic um well classic at this point hold smyrna smyrna to ink ink to con in the fall you can't do that anymore because you would to smyrna or uh, syria excuse me mm -hmm. so yeah but whatever yep um the other like vaguely interesting opening i think is france's 
like bouncing burgundy going up to Piketty and then into Middle Antique, but it is still just positioning to take all three dots, right? <laughs> There's a... This is another very common French opening. This has got to be, whatever, top five. Mm-hmm. It's with an... And again, the thing about French openings, sorry, is that the French openings are all so similar. Like, as long as you're not moving into English Channel with it, your opening is fine. Truly, everything works. <laughs> it is true. You can get a bit screwed over with certain variations. For example, here, if Italy had gone to Piedmont, right? Then France is stuck. They can't take Marseille. Uh, sorry, they can't take Spain with Marseille because Italy would slip in behind them and they have no way to protect it. But Italy didn't go there, so it's completely fine. Um, and even if they do do that, you can still come back from that fairly easily as France, right? Just take the one dot and then build something and take the other one next year instead. Um, it's why oh France no, is I'm such slow a as France. How <laughs> sad. Oops, I have to keep my fleet out here. Oh, God, I just, I wish it could be somewhere else so much. Yeah, anyways. <laughs> No, yeah. I, I I have no respect for, for any weird French openings. Okay, okay you show me once you self-bounce in Burgundy. Then that's a French opening that's weird. Yeah, I mean, actually, like, the, this speaks to how France, how strong France is again. I think that is a viable opening, right? <laughs> it it's works, still... I've seen it! <laughs> Because they misordered. They didn't think they were doing it. In their position, it, it looked almost like this. They just didn't have pressure on Belgium, and that was fine. Yeah, you don't really yeah, need anyways. pressure on Belgium as France. Um, but yes, anyway. So, yeah. shall we go to fall 1901 then? We can... <laughs> yeah, I think let's just go to a fall. We have a, we have a classic spring. We have alliances. Let's see how they shake out, and let's see what actually happens in this game. Alrighty, so fall 1901, we've got the right. German so... supporting Sweden, uh, Russian into Sweden, which is pretty common, um, like just letting them in instead of bouncing them. Yep. We have some weirdness in the lowlands, do you want to talk about that? <laughs> um, you mean just the convoy into Holland and Kiel into Ruhr? Because that's unusual to be sure yes that, this that looks like thing. france is getting teamed up on are you sure i that's my read of this yeah um... i think that germany and england have talked about this and that germany is okay with england convoying into holland with the expectation that there will be a fleet in london that will end up in english channel and then Ruhr will support holland into belgium while keel backfills holland Obviously, this could be an attack against Germany, but my read of this is that this is actually going to be against France. I mean, I think it would be pretty effective against France, but as Germany, I'd be so worried about accepting that deal, right? Because yeah. for England can just so easily go into Heligoland Bight instead and then screw you over. Um, yeah, yeah, but you're building a fleet in Kiel, and that fleet is moving into Heligoland Bight, and then you're supporting him into Belgium, and then you'll take Holland in the fall. So that's mm. how you can sway it. Yeah, I I feel like I this know, is... Like Germany uh, knew that England... Well, obviously we know that Germany knew that England was going to Holland, right? Because otherwise yes. they would have gone to Holland. The question yes. is, did England tell them that? Or did, like, France... Somebody else. Um, <laughs> but, like... Yeah? Yeah, if you aren't... If it wasn't England who told them that, then they would have still just bounced England out, right? Unless, unless they really wanted to be able to build Fleet Keel. Um, and they wanted that badly enough to give England a second build. It, it's it's tough. That's a weird opening, to be sure. I'm very interested to see where it goes. This also might just be an EF that's just committing to killing Germany from the very start and saying, hey, we can keep Germany on one build only. Mm -hmm. um, and I can just convoy into Holland and bounce them and then we just get it could be that, but it's way cooler if this is going to get, if that army in Holland gets used against Belgium. Yes. It'd be really fun. Like, the thing that gives me pause as well is just, again, that Germany getting picked last. So France and England, I think, have a reputation for working together or something similar. But, but like... Uh, that would be rough. 
Yeah, I I think if you knew that this is a France England alliance, you bounce Holland every time, right? Um, I, I think yeah, that's just like you don't want to give them extra units. Yeah, yeah. Like, if you're <laughs> if you're more with England, just why are we letting them? Like, plus they've already got their convoy off. That's usually a huge pain. No, I I agree. If I think England is attacking me in Holland, I bounce it. And if I don't think England is attacking me in Holland, I just move to Holland. Yes. The only time that I don't bounce Holland as Germany is if I am convinced that England is attacking France. Um, as a, as a concession for this, I would demand to see fleet Liverpool. Yeah. Right. I would say, hey, I'm going to give you two things, and in exchange for me giving you this build at the expense of my build, I will need to see fleet Liverpool, and I'll be building a fleet in Kiel to help retake Holland and to cover Holland fight if you come after me. Or something. That makes sense. Or you could just um, let me take Holland and then I'll support you into Belgium next year. Like, the far more classic arrangement, but whatever. Yeah, that would be what I would expect. You'd say, hey, just bounce France out of Belgium instead. <laughs> that stops France getting the build. And Germany was going for Bergen here anyway, right? I I yeah. assume this was an... Ag- Wait, this... Would this have been an agreed bounce or not? It's a... Oh, almost certainly not. Mm-hmm. Marseille's going to Spain. Yeah, you would think that Marseille would usually go to Spain. Marseille only goes to Burgundy if you know that Germany is going to Burgundy as well, right? Um... Yeah, and it's like, and it's again, it's I raising that he's moving into Belgium instead of moving Picardy into Burgundy while Marseille takes Spain. Because Belgium could be bounced by somebody else, Spain couldn't. Yes. So by taking Belgium, it's riskier. There's a chance France has only had one build here. Mm hmm. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> should we'll move see Spain happens, to though. North Africa. North Africa should be a supply center instead of Spain. That would fix France. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it would certainly make things a bit more interesting over there. Although, well, land bridge between Spain and North Africa. Land bridge, but North Africa is the supply center, not Spain. I'd, Boom, I'd be dinner. super curious to play that variant. Um, it's, it's not very relevant to what's going on here, but it, it would no, be quite interesting. All right, sorry, I'm just I'm just <laughs> still annoyed at France's existence on this map, being like, oh, yeah, I can just like have this extra supply center that only I can take ever, and it's going to be mine for five years, <laughs> and so I can afford to be greedy. But uh, France is tough. All right, so um, if we're looking elsewhere on this board... We've identified Village Idiot. Was this anonymous, by the way? It wasn't. It couldn't have been. Uh, this was not anonymous, right? no. Um, but good job for Village Idiot telling us very early who he is. Yes, Thank so you. We appreciate for, it. for those who haven't watched our earlier videos, Ewok is a player called Village Idiot who has a habit of signaling that he is on a board by drawing Vs. Usually a V with an I, but I guess here it's just a V, right? <laughs> um, you don't have extra units. And I mean, honestly, the, um, the Austrian support into Greece is kind of the I. Oh He's yeah, swindled. I guess so. <laughs> that's a, that's a I, I don't know. I don't think that's a long enough eye um, to really what? work. <laughs> you're so God, you're so picky. He's drawing <laughs> I mean, it's in the wrong the orientation for one as well, right? You need to order like yeah. Ionian to Bulgaria or something to make this work. Um, but then I guess you don't get Tunis. Ionian so. to Greece would do it. Uh, yeah, you still don't get Tunis in that case, which... Yeah. <laughs> anyway, yes, this move from Venice to Tunis is because Backstabber allows invalid orders, and so they're just doing that instead of a hold. Um, as you can see, Austria was a little worried about that uh, unit in Venice, clearly, and they moved back to cover Tri- Trieste and make a demilitarized zone with the Russian in Galicia, which is maybe not the best sign for Turkey here. Um given Turkey appears to be committing fully to a Russian alliance. And surely you would want Russia to be going after the Austrian in that case. Yeah, surely, but the DMC and Galicia is not the end of the world. Mm. Both sides break that in 2 every year anyways. Yeah, that's what, we'll see how it goes, I guess. Um, bouncing on the fact... is certainly not yeah. usual. Uh... Yeah, it's what, with the move to Syria, it happens a lot. Oh, really? Yeah, people see... love this bounce on Armenia after the move to Syria. It's funny. I don't actually see the move to Syria very often. I've heard it talked about a few times, but, like, 
it's not something that happens on the boards that I'm on. Um, maybe I agree, it's not a super common one, but when it goes to Syria, it bounces in Armenia like always. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Um, and it's also, like, if, right. if Russia does stab into Black Sea with that, right, then you end up in Armenia, you end up with a exactly. fleet build on the north, like, Russia is never going to do that. Yeah, exactly. Um, it, it's... It's not aggressive against Russia as the move into Armenia would have been. Because you've talked to Russia about it, you're like, hey, I could have been mean to you, but I wasn't. I moved to Syria. But I want to stay in Syria. I want to make it clear that I'm not going to mess with them anymore. Um, this extra Turkish army is often irrelevant. And usually they need to use their fleet to bounce in the Black Sea. But if they can get Russia to agree to bounce with the army, then their wasted army is suddenly doing something productive and they can get their fleet out in a, in a safe manner. Still very pro-Russia, still very good. Um, but like, this, yeah, this is fine. It's yeah. a little safer, right, than the classic Smyrna holds and then Smyrna to Ankara that the other builds does. But it's, it's uh, yeah, I mean, it's the advantage over the hold is that now you can bounce in Armenia and still build fleet Smyrna. So. Yes. Uh, all right, so I think that pretty much covers everything that's happened here, right? Um, yep. Everything interesting, anyway. Shall we go ahead to spring, well, winter even, 01? Yes. Uh, all right, lots of builds, lots of builds, all right. lots of builds. Uh, lots of armies. Cool. Lot. Yeah, I mean, not that many okay, armies. No, like, Austria armies. built armies, Germany built army Kiel. That's that, the that was the one army really... I was really looking at, and the Russian ones. Yeah. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. I guess Army St. Petersburg. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a good army. It's a, like, look, it's a good army build. Army St. Petersburg. Hey, guess what he didn't build on this top board? Army Moscow. <laughs> army Moscow. <laughs> uh, we need more Army Moscows. No, this is, a, this is a turn where I'm okay with Army St. Petersburg, Army Warsaw. Um, yeah, because, hey, I want to have pressure on Norway right now, so I can maybe do something with it. I am confused as to Army Kiel. I was certain that was going to be a fleet. Um, it, you know, I mean, I guess he's trying to be pro-England. He's trying to say, hey, I not, I've let you into Holland. I'm not going to build a fleet. We're going to be fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, I mean, the fleet London did go down, so there is some potential of, of the uh, G Germany-England alliance that you were talking about. Um We'll see if that comes to pass, I guess. France obviously puts down basically the only builds they can do. Oh, isn't it such a shame that I was in Marseille still and therefore have to build Fleet Brest? <laughs> oh, I just hate it. Ah, oh, it's so unfortunate. Unlucky. Uh, yeah. Um, you know what, maybe, maybe, maybe it's going to go to Mid-Atlantic Ocean, though. It's going to be really safe to you. I promise it's not going to attack you. We're fine. <laughs> I, I feel like it will go to Mid-Atlantic Ocean, right? But Yeah, exactly. Yeah, primarily because that <laughs> lots of Goshen can go to anywhere. Um... <laughs> All right. So, uh, do we have anything else to talk about here? Not really, I think. Let's see if Germany gets exploded. Let's just, let's England just walk straight into Helgeland. All right. Let's go to spring 1902. Skagerrak. No, no, no. Well... And then Germany supports Norway into Sweden. Ah, uh, so and... this is just death to, uh... No, 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 okay, so England is surrounding Norway, I guess, Norway. here, to take it back. Yeah. But... What? <laughs> um, Russia decided to use this opportunity to attack Germany. I'm... Um, I'm so Pro-Austria. Austria hits Tur uh, Austria hits Italy because Venice is cooked. Austria's pro Turkey. This is is this the rat? Yeah, it looks like a rat. I'm I'm amazed. Like it's such a rat that that Russia has rotated their fleet into Romania, which is it's just like a rat in a high level game. That's sick. Yeah, so just to, uh, as context to the viewers here, first, this fleet going into Romania, you only ever want fleet Romania if you want to work with Austria, and usually it's something that you would prefer not to have anyway, right? Because the army gives you more options. The reason you would dedicate three units here to getting your fleet into Romania is literally just to say, 
hey, I am 100% sticking with uh, you, Austria. And in this case, it looks like they're saying I'm sticking with you, Austria and Turkey, actually, because Turkey is moving out to the south, they're getting supported into Aegean by Austria, and Austria is making this move on Venice. For more context, what we're talking about with the RAT, that is uh, Russia-Austria-Turkey alliance, it's a triple that you never see, like, ever, because it's so incredibly unstable. Turkey is just stuck behind their two allies, their only way out is via Ionian, right, and they are going to basically have an empty space around them when their allies move to the line, and they'll be able to stab into it. So you have to be really careful running an alliance like this. But yeah. it's kind of interesting putting fleets of Aspol in Romania, because it does protect a little bit against that, right? Um, and it doesn't look like Austria is going to run off to the to the German line. They are just attacking Italy. So... They are protected. <laughs> yeah, they're doing a rat where Austria and Russia both agree to keep three units each holding Turkey back. Yeah, which feels inefficient, but hey. you know, it, it's what make the <laughs> what'll make the rat work, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. Uh, it's that's what it takes. That's what it takes. Yeah, I'm. I'm also just curious as to why Russia jumped in on Germany here, and Germany, like, clearly either Germany knew that this was going to happen, or Russia knew that Germany was stabbing them, right? Because Germany supports the English unit into Sweden. So... Yeah. Yeah, and they go for Tyrolia, so... They probably should have gone for Silesia if they thought that the Russian was attacking them this hard. It's just a confusing situation. You never see a position like this, usually. <laughs> Especially not meanwhile, in O2. Meanwhile, over in France, just, just <laughs> oh, we're looking over in the east in this red. You got France calmly getting into Burgundy. England calmly pushing all of his units away. France, I'm going to sit around for a little bit. I'll be fine. I'm just going to take Spain. I'll be in Burgundy. I might not even attack Germany here. I'm probably going to attack Germany. I'm probably like, Force a disband in Ruhr and tell Germany, hey, look, it's because you need an army over in Berlin or a fleet over on that front. So we'll get you, we'll let you get Ruhr over there more easily. You need another fleet, I think. So let me let me into Ruhr real quick. <laughs> well, that will probably not end very well for Germany. I mean, this already looks like it's not going to end very well for Germany, right? They're getting attacked Germany's by seven, Russia. Like... They don't have <laughs> Holland. They're completely surrounded and they've only got one fleet. Um, it's it's just painful. Uh, um, and hey, they're also Italy's only potential salvation against this Austria uh, attacking Venice. So they're going to be asked to do a bunch of different things here. But I assume that they'll focus on defending Berlin over helping out uh, the Italian. <laughs> yep. Uh well, let's see. Um, I'm curious what you think the unit, the English units will do. Do they just take Norway back? I assume yeah, so. Yeah, you right? lost the center. I usually retake the center. Oh, am I probably going to convoy my army nurture there because that's what armies are for? Uh, <laughs> just like, why did I build this army if I'm not going to convoy, man? But I don't want to convoy because I don't want to die. <laughs> it's fine. I'll convoy it. I'm sure. I'm building. I'll build an army in Liverpool. I'll pull a meme. That army's <laughs> gonna be sticking around. Uh, all right. Uh, let's go to the fall of 1902. Got it. Is France just gonna be first in our power rankings forever? Oh, how how nice. France misordered. I'm sorry. I meant to. <laughs> I meant to support whole Ionia. I wish I could help you. I'm really sorry. Uh, Oops, my fleet's still in mid-Atlantic. Oh man. Oh boy. Okay, well, there are some interesting things happening. Poor uh, Germany here. England just Poor supports themselves Germany. out of Sweden. So they're giving up the north to, to Russia. Um, yeah, just conceding to Scandinavia, but getting into Denmark. Um... Yep. Oof. And they, Oof. they don't Oof. even get a build? Because they didn't take nope. anything? They lost yep. to Norway, and they... They took Denmark, so they're even. Yeah, 
Ah, well, they're still five. It's a five-center England. That's okay. Russia's only on seven centers. France is only on six. It's okay being five. But what are you going to do? The... Right? You need somebody to work with you. Yeah, I just... If you knew that the Russian was going to do this, then why not just take Norway back? Um, I, I don't because know. you want to work. Well, like, you can't. Like, do you really want all of your eggs in the France is going to stab me basket? Well, you, you build something at home after taking Norway, obviously. Um, but then you're at war with Russia, though, and Germany. Your well, only ally is France. Why would you be at war with Germany? Because Germany is. Oh, 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 sorry, Germany. you're saying just don't accept the support of Denmark at all. I thought you were saying yeah. accept the support of Denmark and take Norway. Uh, I don't know. I was saying that you should stay in Sweden. Just take just Norway. Take Norway. And then, yeah. Oh, um, yeah, that's reasonable. I mean, I would want to do that, I think, but... Yeah, be pro-Germany. Let Germany fight help you against Russia and France while Germany dies, and then maybe you can get Kiel out of the deal, and maybe France just gets Munich, and maybe you get enough bills that you can keep France from stabbing you? Yeah. Hmm. I mean, you're also just seeing that there's this RAT in the south, right? Surely any bills that Russia is getting are gonna be somewhere near you as England. Um... I don't know well, why you just this left is also, and Norway. This is also a very unusual RAT in that Russia has armies in Ukraine and Sevastopol with the fleet on the Black Sea still. Yes, that is true. That is that is not <laughs> at all common. But that's right? exactly Usually, why you think the builds will be in the north, right? Because they already have enough units in the south. There's... Eh, maybe. But like, Warsaw is more important, I guess. Right? Like, they already have... They have all of Scandinavia. Russia's not going to commit more over there. Mm -hmm. That building St. Petersburg has to walk so far to get to a useful center, whereas Warsaw does Warsaw's going to start fighting for Berlin immediately. So Russia's absolutely building Warsaw. Mm. So if you're you fighting over Norway, they're going to build in the north for sure, if they have builds, which they probably wouldn't. But like any builds they would have would go in the north. Yeah, I guess they could just immediately pivot and take Sweden and Norway here as well, because they have the Skagerrak position. Yep. Well, uh, Russia's still in Baltic, so it's not that open. Yeah. Well, I guess we'll see. Um, I do want to look at the south of the map here, because it does look quite interesting. Uh, yeah, it's the best rat you've ever seen. Austria's <laughs> moving its army south into Bulgaria. Yeah, why is uh, Austria in Bulgaria? <laughs> Well, they're doing a fun thing where there's now the Turkish army in Greece and the Austrian armies in Bulgaria, so they're just swapping those centers. Austria is still building, and I suspect the idea is going to be to convoy the Turkish army over to Italy. Yeah, and I guess, like, in an RAT, you do eventually want to give um, Turkey Greece anyway, because it makes yep. you as Austria less vulnerable. Um, I've never seen it done this early. The reason for that is that usually Turkey doesn't need the extra build this early, right? That needs to go to Austria. But they've solved it here by making the Austrian have Bulgaria, which I think is a really risky play as the Turk. <laughs> While Budapest moves to Serbia, man, I think we might have finally found enough conditions on the RAT to make it a reasonable alliance, because Turkey might actually have to make a defensive move. <laughs> at any point in their life. I I think Turkey is just dead here, right? Like as Austria Russia, why do you why would you not just go Take Black Sea, just kill him? Yeah, Armenia, Black Sea, Constantinople this turn. Turkey doesn't have a build, so they don't have any fleets to protect against that. They have to let one of Constantinople or Armenia in, because they can only bounce in well, I guess they could bounce with a GNC. Um but like, yeah, I mean, they're definitely doing that. Yeah, that's e even if they do bounce both of those moves, they're just dead. They get convoyed into, like, <laughs> by Black Sea, and and they're completely yeah. screwed. <laughs> um, yeah? Yeah, I'm I'm not a fan of this as Turkey, but hey, it's, it's oh, a survival. We found a rat that's bad um, for Turkey. Yes, <laughs> somehow. <laughs> that's amazing. Well done, Austria and Russia. Like how many how many of these alliances have you seen over the course of your life? Very few. Um, 
Oh, actually, I've seen. Uh, when you play, would you see games with beginners? This happens all the time. Well, because like, they're just like, hey, we're all we're all neighbors. It's allies. So we can work together, right? So like, it, it's a very like common beginner alliance. And then even in mid mid to levels, people start realizing that it doesn't work. But I have never seen a rat go like this, where they're clearly all working together. This is clearly all negotiated, and Turkey's just potentially going to die in like 04. Yeah, I've never seen that. So that's I, amazing. I think this is just the case of Russia and Austria are holding Turkey hostage and saying, "Hey, be in our rat, or you will die." <laughs> I don't think so. I think they're really they're, there's no way they were able to threaten Turkey into this because if they're threatening Turkey, Turkey just holds Bulgaria, supports Greece into Ionia, and says, "Hey, Italy, here's what's happening. They're clearly attacking you. Please move Ionia into Adriatic Sea. I'm gonna stab them here. Then you take Greece and you build fleet Ankara, and then you're out of it." Yeah, I guess, actually. Turkey was not coerced into this. Turkey willingly chose to want... Like, Turkey wants this to happen because Russia and Austria have talked Turkey into wanting this to happen without realizing that Turkey is so exposed here. Mm -hmm. This is incredible play. This is this is what high-level diplomacy looks like because this is what the best diplomacy players can do. They can talk you into giving away your position and you're happy about it. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, we'll see how well this goes for Turkey, I suppose. Yeah, because it might go great, because Turkey's also a great diplomacy player. He's on the top board of this big tournament. You don't get here by being bad at diplomacy. So it's possible. Turkey is just like, I'm going to be fine. I can talk them into stabbing each other, because they're not going to get enough gains out in here or whatever, right? Turkey's not dead yet. Just there's potential if Russia and Austria attack Turkey for Turkey to die, and that's the incredible part, because that just doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. Not in rats. <laughs> Right, and Italy is kind of screwed here if they do stick together, right? Italy fails to convoy Italy back. They had, they had no way to do that well. And Italy is one of those places kind of like England, not as bad as England, but like a bit like England, where defending it is quite a lot more difficult with fleets than it is with armies. Um, the good yeah, part... Yeah, but do you like, do you keep... Um, do you disband one of your fleets, or do you just disband Tunis? No, you disband Tunis 100% of the time here, yeah, right? Well, you can convoy your army back. To where? You can Naples? go to Tuscany? Oh, no, no you Naples. have to take Naples off if that's the case. I see, yeah. right. And then convoy it back in. Okay, and then they walk into Tunis behind you while you're doing that? <laughs> well, then you don't convoy out of Tunis. Boom, gotcha. <laughs> Alright, well, it it looks like it'll be an interesting time and a very sad time for Italy over there. Um, <laughs> despite the uh, the French signaling their support from as far away as possible. I got your back, but I'm not moving into Western Med because that would give up my attack against England. Yes. Um, Alright, shall we go to Winter? Yeah, let's go to Winter and do power rankings. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> uh, so, Army Marseille. Um, I... I guess Reasonable. that's interesting. Army. Oh, Army Moscow. Interesting. Yeah. Oh, I, don't worry, Turkey. That's definitely anti-Germany. I just... Yep. Well, Oops, it, it's I'm flexible, sorry. you see. It's anti-Germany, but it can be used oh, to protect their position against, against England. Against yeah. England. Yeah. 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 Uh, no, now, I'm, now I'm feeling Army Moscow. <laughs> yeah, now I'm feeling Army Moscow. You got me. I'm convinced. And it's all right because Austria is clearly pro-Turkey because they built further Austria's away from Turkey. Turkey. They built in Vienna, right? Yeah, we're yeah, we're yeah. going to be going making progress against like Italy and Germany here, right? Don't worry, don't worry, Turkey. We're we're okay. Yeah, we're fine. Everything's gonna be fine. God, we're gonna look so stupid if they actually do stick with they Turkey might. here. <laughs> they, they might, but like meanwhile, we're doing power rankings, right? Yes. So France is number one, right? Yep. Um... Okay. Okay. Well, we're on the same page. No enemies. Well, they have uh, Germany as an enemy who can't do. Not even they to took them, Ruhr. Right? They, Germany willingly let them take Ruhr. That was true. Uh, England is right. pushed up to the line. Like France has fleet Mid Atlantic fleet Spain just sitting there waiting to jump on someone. It is the perfect. Italy is going to be begging for Army Marseille to move into Piedmont to help. Maybe Italy will even support France into Venice, like. <laughs> better France to have it and then Austria to have it like now this French position is glorious um 
It might move to Gascony and just get Convoy back into, like, Clyde or something. I think more France than that, might... even, um, Italy is probably going to ask France to come south with a fleet, right? And backfill Tyrrhenians so that they can cover yeah, both Tunis and... I want my fleets to kill England, you see. Mm -hmm. But, like, you can do that. You can just move Spain south coast into Western Med and say, Hey, Italy, I'm coming to help you. And then you still can swing back. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Um... Support yourself in Western Med. And then, but then you have to do the fall stab. Eh, whatever. Yeah, yeah, the fall stab still works. Anyways, France is number one. Great, that's fun. Um, Germany's is Germany lower than Italy? Uh, I mean, so it depends whether you think that stab on England is going to happen or not, right? And England does still have the army in Yorkshire, so the the French stab against them is not all that effective here. Uh, I. I think Germany's lower than England, or Italy. I think Germany's last. Yeah, I think the I think... England France is going to stick together for a bit, and that means that Germany is going to die. Um, I, I think that Kiel, Berlin, and Munich will all drop next spring. Oh, as in one to Russia, one to England, one to France. Yes. Yeah, I I think that's very possible. Um... Maybe Russia doesn't want to do that because I feel like if if I were Russia, I'd be really scared about me just getting collapsed on by them. But if I'm Russia, I'm also very confident that France is stabbing England, so it might even be okay. But then France just wins. I don't like throwing the game to France. Mm -hmm. So maybe as Russia, I'm confident I can get England to just swing against France immediately. We still split up Germany together, but then I'll get Munich afterwards, and that's how I get the edge. But then I'm building army in Warsaw. I don't know. But either way, I think Germany's getting Germany's clearly getting crushed. There's too many armies all around. Italy, at least, like has lost Ionian and lost Venice. So that's not great. But it's still Italy, and it's tough to get units into Italy, so it's going to take a while. Yep. Uh, all right, all right, so Germany lost, Turkey. Italy second lost. Uh, yeah, then Turkey. Yes. Then the the interesting part is, uh, where are Russia, Austria, and England in comparison to one another? England is below Austria and Russia, because England is second fiddle to France, who is too strong. That is true, and Austria and Russia have a kind of balance, like a pretty well-balanced alliance, I think, between the two of them. Obviously not well-balanced between them and Turkey. <laughs> Poor old Turkey. But the two of them are solid, and both of them are going to have good positions to stab. I think that I prefer to be in, I don't know, Austria's position, because I just hate being in Russia. Because like, I feel exposed in the north, and I always feel exposed in the north, but nothing to do about it. I, I'm pretty confident. But I'm gonna get the Black same. Sea. Like, but I'm gonna get the Black Sea. It's Russia, dude. Don't you want to have Black Sea and Armenia and Romania? I like, mean, yeah, that is true. Russia gets more out of stabbing the Turk here than Austria does. Um, although... Austria gets Greece on. Russia gets Ankh and Smyrna. Like they both kind of get that. But then the fleet Black Sea means Russia's position for the stab on Austria afterwards. Yeah, I like I, I think I still Austria. prefer Austria in this position just because yeah. France like. Just because the France England alliance is going to be a problem for Russia. Um, I'm talking about France stabbing England so much. I don't. I think it's close. I think it's really close. And um, I, I'm fine saying Austria above Russia. Okay, I'm gonna put. Well, I already have put Austria above Russia. So. Right. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's we move ahead to the spring of '03 then. Um. All right. Well, yeah, that England France alliance lasted a real long time. Yep. Okay, yeah, you were, you were correct. They went for England. This is it's interesting because the the convoy they do get the guaranteed convoy off into Clyde with this, right? And yeah, oh, that positions them, but it's still slow. Um, it's not that slow, man. I mean, England is going up one, right? No, they're not. They're going to lose Holland. Um, There's a chance, right? I assume France here talks to Germany. He's like, yo, I'm not going to tap Munich anymore. Support yourself into Kiel from Berlin. I'll hit Holland and then mm -hmm. burn business. Um, but then that forces the disband of Kiel. Actually, so England still builds to defend. Yeah, it's getting pretty slow. Yep. Uh, we've got people annoyingly drawing over the whole map with invalid orders here. <laughs> with yeah, Yorkshire yeah, that's... moving to Syria. Yorkshire that's shouldn't be moving to yeah. Liverpool. You... <laughs> Then you would yeah, have had a 50-50 against this. Mm -hmm. yeah, yes. That's fine. Well, move it to Edinburgh, then. This is, uh... Yeah, 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 Edinburgh. I mean, but then you can move to Irish Sea and come away to Wimps, dude. 
that is true. Um... I think I think now is more likely than I ever see here because of this. So I think Eddie was the correct play here, but it's fine. It's mm -hmm. God the I I actually really like this French attack, even though I think I wouldn't have played it myself. Like it feels very bold to go after a, quite a strong ally like this with a stab that takes no centers. Um, yeah, but you're just gonna kill him. England's dead. I don't know that England's dead. I think England All has right. a decent chance of, of like, right. surviving We'll take bets. We'll take bets. <laughs> I think England's dead. England's dead, give it three years. England's right. going to be out of Liverpool in London. I I will take that. I will say, hey, like England is not is going to be fine. They might lose a centre. But I think they'll hold. Okay, um, we're, but we're, we're including Holland in that? No, I'm not including... Okay, so they're going to um, lose Holland for sure, and then you think they might lose one eight, one center. Well, and so they might not fight. even lose Holland here, right? They can, they they've might. got ways to just do it. They can support Kiel back and try and bounce that way. Um, they could try and get the German back on side. <laughs> like I said, I think it's going to take three years before England is looking real cooked. All right. Well, we'll see what happens with that. Shall we have a look at what happened in the south here? Well, they went for a stab, but Turkey realized, ah, crap, they're gonna kill me now. Maybe the Bulgaria was just a stab. You think that's the case? Oh, that that would have made more sense, actually. Wait, but surely, to be a, a, I'll surely take if Greece. that was a stab, then Austria just doesn't give them Greece. Or uh, doesn't take Ionian? No, they want to take Ionic. So Austria wants to attack Italy, right? Austria wants that position and to kill Greece. Mm -hmm. Or to kill Turkey. So you take Bulgaria, deny them the build so they can't build fleet Ankara. You tell Russia about it. Russia's like, hey, okay, we can go to Black Sea and then make this attack happen. Yeah, that's it's got to be that. But then surely Russia would have moved into Black Sea on the last turn um, instead of this mm -hmm. one. I... Well, if I could, I've seen Russians be scared about Austria being sneaky. And trying to hit use as an excuse to hit Romania or something. Ah, uh, right? yeah, that's like, fair, I guess. <laughs> so Russia's just like, hey, look, if you make it work, I'll make it work, and I can get a black seat. That'll, mm -hmm. that'll be cool. I do like the convoy back from uh, from Turkey. Yeah. I think that helps them a lot. I'm not sure I like the well, 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 the attack well, on yeah. Greece in general. I feel like Austria should have bounced them out of Constantinople. Um, they have Greece anyway, right? There's no way yeah, but... that the Italy, the sorry that Turkey keeps that. Yeah, but I like taking centers. Yeah, but you get the center in the full regardless. <laughs> yeah, but you see, I I can take a center. How many times, Captain Meme, have you said I can take this center later, and then you discover you could not actually take that center later? Okay, yes, I suppose. How many times <laughs> has that happened to you? Because that's happened to me. That's happened to me quite a lot. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sorry. Okay. Well, I guess you'll I'm have... Sorry. If you didn't take Greece here, you would have three on Greece, right? You have Adriatic, assuming you still retreat there. And then if the Italian is working with the Turk, then you have an issue. Um, so... Do you even have an issue? You just support him from... From Albania and tap Ionian, and then you're fine. Um... So no, I think they they could have taken Greece on the next turn instead and kept the the Turk out of Constantinople here. Uh, but I mean, it still gets them yeah. It's fine. Yeah, and they moved their fleet back at a Constantinople on its equivalent. Mm -hmm. Doesn't actually help that much. Yeah. Whatever, it's fine. It's fine. Everything is okay. I I just think bouncing them out here is kind of valuable because it means that Smyrna is the only thing that can defend both Armenia and Ankara, right? So they have to choose between them. Whereas here now they they have a little bit more in defense for this full turn. Um, but hey, it, in my uh, method there, you would have to use Bulgaria against Greece in the fall anyway, so you would have less attack on Turkey, I suppose. Um, yeah, well. <laughs> take dot. C dot. Take dot. Alright, fair. What do you think about uh, Austria not retreating to Tunis then? <laughs> oh. 
I mean, I suspect that Italy would kick him out of Tunis. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Um, so it's like Adriatic is just a really good place to be in the war between Austria and Italy. Convoys into Apulia abound because they've already taken Greece. So we have more flexibility with our units. We're probably not going for that convoy directly, but it's fine. And then Adriatic Sea, like, you really don't want Italy getting back into Adriatic to retake Venice and Trieste, so... Yeah, that makes sense. Although, if you retreat to Tunis, they do have to spend the turn knocking you out of Tunis, so... Yeah, but... Okay, so they spend a turn knocking you out of Tunis. But then, if what for Adriatic Sea, now... I build... I have to build Fleet Trieste, and then I'm spending my unit in Trieste bouncing Adriatic Sea... As opposed to just building army Trieste and then using that army to mess around in like Venice and Apulia and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, uh, fair enough. Um, and I guess once you get knocked out of Tunis, there you kind of you kind of want to take it off the board, even because Western Med is not a great place for an Austrian fleet. Although, once you're worried about a French solo, yeah, yeah, I do kind of like the idea of annoying France. <laughs> But yeah. yeah, but that's because you're not in the game. Mm -hmm. That is true. Uh, <laughs> it's better to be focus on your own position. I, oh God. Balance of power at its finest. I understand that I'm in a war with Italy and Turkey, but man, France looks like he's going to solo, and I need to spend my unit slowing him down instead of winning my wars. <laughs> Well, if you don't need... Like, Western Meg can still be annoying to Italy as well, right? It pins some Italian fleets in place. Um, no, it doesn't. People just ignore... Like, people ignore these fleets a lot. It's fine. It's okay. We don't worry about... Here to the Adriatic, which is a critical province in the war between Austria and Italy. This is great position. This is good. Mm -hmm. All right. Also, well done for Italy, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Italy's position no longer looks nearly that bad. Yeah, whereas Germany does look quite bad still. Um, oh yeah, Germany still looks rough. But yeah, like, Italy's position, I think from here, they're just going to support Ionian to Apulia, move Tyrrhenia at sea into Ionian, and have, like, a solid defensive position, lots of pressure against Venice, and Austria's going to be regretting this dead. Yeah, alright, well, let's move into full 1903 then. Um, yeah. And they do, they do move into Apulia, they get supported into Ionian, they have the position on Austria now. Um, and Turkey manages to successfully defend everything, except Greece, so that's pretty good for them as well. Yeah. Um, nice guesswork there, instead of, like, I feel like Russia point. should have, well, for one, I would always convoy Romania to Ankara here if I was going for that attack, instead of just moving Black Sea indirectly. Um, just because Black Sea is so valuable. It's, it's like, really clear that the Austrian and the Russian don't really trust each other here. Yeah. Right? But that's why you don't convoy Romania, dude. Yeah, yeah. Um, so they're not doing that because they don't trust the Austrian, and Austria is moving Albania to Serbia on this turn, uh, which <laughs> also indicates they don't really trust the Russian. Um... This alliance doesn't feel very stable, despite it being in a pretty overwhelming position. Uh... Yeah, that's a line. This is good alliance play diplomacy. This is what your alliances should look like. But it is both you... partners just be like eh, <laughs> eh. making some optimal moves minute. because you're scared of your ally. Wait yeah. a minute! If he kills me, I'm dead. I have to kill me. Uh... Yeah, yeah, that's... I think this is good alliance play. <laughs> oh my god, did Germany survive? They did Germany survive. Survived. They survived in Kiel, uh, despite having no units there. Yep. That's quite cool. They, they also... moved there, though. Yeah, they, they moved, they bounced the English player out, right? And France supported the English player back into Holland, so... Yeah. A good guess by France there. And France doesn't well, go for the convoy. That's the thing, right, that I think you... With all of our chaos in the south and moving up to the northwest, we now notice there's just a fleet in English Channel and Norwegian Sea. Clearly they are the best of friends. <laughs> okay, well, this is... 
this is blatantly, um, I mean, I actually really like this attack. You know, you, when you think about attacks on England early, you think, I need to convoy in, because convoying in helps me crack stuff. But if you just get into Norwegian and English Channel, you're in a pretty good spot to screw them over anyway. <laughs> And you've still got your convoy possibility, right? You can convoy Belgium over through the English Channel. Um, England doesn't have the fleets on it. I don't think France is attacking England here. Not this turn. Are you sure? That you think this was England's a green? Building. Oh, I, f I didn't notice the, the move up to Norway in the first uh, place. That is actually big. Um, but then why would France support England back into Holland? If they weren't attacking. Like, there's no way this these French moves were agreed with England. <laughs> there's, there just isn't, right? Yeah, that's probably true. Mm -hmm. it, and I guess increasing the front size is better for France than it is for England. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with all the English France. fleets pushed so far forward, right? There's no way they can dislodge anything. So if you just... I, I, for one, I don't think France was expecting England to build on this turn. Um, because I think if you expect England it's to build, you just go for the convoy in, right? Really? You think that France thought it was... I, I don't know, man. England is sitting in Kiel with Denmark adjacent, so Kiel isn't going to get lost. Um, and England just has guesses everywhere, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I think you're hoping England doesn't build as France. And you might be making a play to ensure that, or to maximize the chances of that occurring. But, eh. Well, I'm, well, I am interested to see how this works out for them. It's a very novel approach on attacking England as France. Uh, it's... Yeah. <laughs> Just pushing well, everything just forward as me. much as possible. I really don't think France and England are working together. There's no Why way. Why is she to see, dude? Because it, it has, like, an attack on Edinburgh from there. And it Who has an cares? attack on North Sea. Who cares? <laughs> really? You think he's gonna, like, support English Channel into North Sea and Brest into English Channel? You think that's his plan in the, for the spring? Well, no, because England has too many fleets, right? You can't get into North Sea. Um, oh, why not just move the Irish Sea? Mm, I don't know. I think he just wants as forward a position as possible to be annoying. Um. <laughs> I think, I think like, winning is more annoying than, like, having an extra unit for my opponent to think about. Mm. Yeah, fair, I guess. Well, I mean, I France know, build. we'll see what happens. Um... <laughs> Yeah, France got a build. It's going to be Fleet Breast, because it has to be Fleet Breast, right? Yes. And if it's not England Fleet Breast, build... I will be very surprised. Um... Yeah, and then England's going to build Fleet London, because you have to build Fleet London. Um, Turkey has a disband. Fleet Eastern Met off the board, presumably. Austria's building. Presumably Army Budapest, because you trust your ally in Russia so much. <laughs> uh, if you build Fleet Budapest... No, Fleet Budapest... Army Budapest Army... here, then... Well, I mean, this alliance What's the point just of isn't happening. Allies like me? <laughs> it's just like you—you you have so much pressure against Russia. There, you're basically saying, "Hey, no, you can't make any progress because I'm just going to sit here and make you defend yourself." No, 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 no. no. You can support yourself in Romania. Just um, just just support yourself in Romania real quick. <laughs> Uh, and, and, uh, let me know when you do that, please. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Oh, Just so I can make sure my tactics are set in the West. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, uh -huh. Yes. These units around you are definitely not going to do anything at all. This is oh, fine. Oh no. Uh, all right, all right. Fine, fine, fine. Army Vienna instead. That's way better. Uh, all right. Yeah. Definitely not moving into Galicia. I promise. Did Russia didn't get a build right because they gave up Norway um, and gained Berlin. Yes. And they have Germany being annoying in Prussia slash Bohemia. I don't know which oh, one they'll keep. Um, yeah. Interestingly, Germany could have taken both off and rebuilt in Kiel and then be defending their center, but clearly they don't yeah. want to do that. Um, what do you think is more likely to survive here? Vienna or Kiel? <laughs> <laughs> yep, very fair. All right, shall we move ahead to the winter? Yeah, let's see it.
All right, winter 1903. Fleet yeah, Fleet Press, Fleet London. A good sign that France and England are allied. <laughs> uh, all right. Yep, and Army Vienna and Eastern Medoff. You got you call all of them. Um, all right. Okay, what is the point of Fleet? I don't know, man. There's a reason why you convoy onto the British mainland when you're trying to kill England as France. This is why, because like, how do you actually kill England from here? It's so hard. It is. I. Yeah, I don't know. That fleet in Norwegian Sea is so isolated. Unless you're targeting North Sea, and England has too many units on that, right? You need to get Russia on side, but I don't think Russia is going to be on side, given they just donated yeah. a sensor to England. Well, did they? Oh, well, that was a guess. It might have been. I think it's. I think Russia is perfectly happy to see England building here because you really do need England strong enough to at least slow down France significantly because your games against Turkey are going to be pretty slow, it looks like. Yes, um, and you've got. A friendly Austrian who is sitting in Serbia still. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, like, oh come on, that's just that's just good common sense. Mm -hmm. Yes, I mean, I yeah, I don't think this Austria Russia alliance is going to hold long enough for them to kill Turkey. That is my prediction here. <laughs> um, I think it's going to hold long enough for them to kill Turkey. Eh, to get Turkey down to one cent. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're going to crack Turkey, and then they will try to stab each other to be the one that makes all the gains from Turkey. Mm -hmm. And then Turkey will get back. And no, 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 no. That's why they're going to crack Turkey first, because they both play a lot of diplomacy, and they know that if you crack Turkey, but Turkey's still on, like, two centers, Turkey comes back in the game. So you have to do it as late as possible. Mm -hmm. But before the other person does. <laughs> It's gonna be uh, fun to see. Effort. I also want to see what this army Bohemia is gonna do. I think that'll be fun. Um, it's gonna retake Munich with Russian support. Uh, I mean, that, that is actually feasible. It could also wa wander into Galicia and go on a field trip. Um, I, uh, Galicia would be the most fun. I agree. <laughs> All right. All right. I think we should do some moves. Yeah, let's go into spring nineteen oh four. 500 Ooh, server convoy. error. Excellent. Yeah. Let me refresh that. Um, Ooh, all right. Well, there's a convoy into Kiel from Sweden. So Russia is pretty clearly pro England here, saying, yes, go win. But I get Kiel out of the deal. So I gave you Norway. It's only fair. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be fun. England tries to take the North Sea, but. Uh, excuse me. France tries to take the North Sea from England, but fails spectacularly. Um, makes. Relatively little progress, except getting into Ruhr, but now Russia is going to prop up England against France, so that's not great. Meanwhile, France sends Bohemia up into Silesia, presumably offering support into Berlin, slash, I guess, on Warsaw, but I think these things get cooked. In the south, Italy takes Adriatic. Well, yeah, they have that guaranteed, right? Um, yeah, and that's good position. Vienna. Yeah, and that's a really good position now, because now they get into Apulia. Ooh, Italy's going to have three on Venice. Oh, man. God, this is such an annoying position for Austria, man. Oh, well. Mm -hmm. Well, they I didn't go into right. Apulia. They went They went from Apulia, right? So they've only got yeah. two on Venice. Well, yeah, but they're going, they... to have, they're going to have... They're going to have three on Venice. Yeah, do right. you, at this point, assume Turkey is so desperate that you can leave Ionian open? I guess that's probably true, Yes. Right? Yeah. Absolutely. It's... I bet Turkey's so desperate they'll support me into Greece. Ooh, that would be fun. <laughs> I wouldn't do it, but I think they're desperate enough they'd say yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, good guesses from Turkey as well. Not covering Ankara, um, like support holding themselves in Constantinople, that's... Oh, you know the best part about defending against two allies who don't trust each other <laughs> is if um, they think the other person is likely to get games, um, you can often get them to league plans. That is so true. you say to Russia, hey, Russia, look, I understand you got to attack me, but you really don't want Austria to get the games from you. So you tell me whenever you support him into Constantinople, and you can support him and still look like you're being a good ally, while I support Holt and happen to guess correctly against him. <laughs> I love it. 
Now, Let's as see. Turkey, you have to trust Russia because Russia says, hey, I'm supporting him into Constantinople and then just tap Sankara. And then you look like a dumbass when there's a Russian army in Ankara. But sometimes it works and it's really funny when you can stall somebody out for a really long time. Mm -hmm. This works better when there's like a weaker partner in a relationship. Like it's in England, France, and your Germany trying to survive. And England clearly is scared, but England is locked in a war against Russia and Scandinavia, and so England has like just an army in the North Sea that can help around, but England recognizes, oh god, if France gets spilled, then France kills me next, so it's the like, oh god, it's me next, but I can't stab them because I'm gonna die. That's more of the situation, when Russia's got four armies in the South, Russia like wants to make progress and kill you too, so I wouldn't trust it here, but something like this could happen. It's really funny. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, I'm also super interested in the fact that like, if this happens usually... It's because the enemy doesn't have a guaranteed attack, right? You're guessing correctly. But here, yeah. Russia, these last few turns could have just supported Sevastopol into Armenia and made some progress. They yep. decided to go for other options instead. It it does make you think, do they actually want to make that progress or not, right? I think they um, do. I think it's just, it's, it's, it's a fun guess, right? Where, look, Smyrna to Armenia doesn't help if they go for it. Like, if they try to support the attack, they can just do it. And they're so likely to do it because it's a guaranteed attack. Man, Smyrna should do something else. Like, perhaps, support a Janta Khan, while Khan covers Ankara. Mm -hmm. Because that way, if they get greedy and feel like, oh, since it's a guaranteed attack, I could do something else, I could do something else. Right? Like, if you're defending here as Turkey, are you seriously having Smyrna tap Armenia? No, okay. I, I'm almost certainly doing what you said, going Constantinople to Ankara and supporting Aegean back into Con. Exactly. Um, so since they're doing that, man, why would I... I don't need to support myself into Armenia. <laughs> Amusingly, though, this um, like this Russian-Austrian moveset isn't great against that either, right? Because it bounces Aegean out. You kind of want to let Aegean in if you're going to do that. Um, uh -huh. Eh, no, I guess you, if you don't let a GN in, then you get a guaranteed support with, uh, with Black Sea, which is fine. Um, yeah. So we can clearly not choose the wine in front of you. <laughs> yes, indeed. All right, well, um, are there any other tactics you want to look at on the board? I guess Germany working with France is interesting. Uh, the... Yeah, there's an extra unit. We'll see. Mm-hmm. Um, it could go for Warsaw or Berlin, though, with, with Russian... With French assistance, yeah. if it's Berlin. Uh, I like that triple bounce in Galicia. Mm-hmm. That one's curious, because as Austria, you would surely prefer to bounce Russia in Budapest, just to make sure that they don't wander in there. No, no, because you don't want Bohemia moving to Galicia. Yeah. Oh, when you oh Germany, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah that makes sense. Um, yeah, you want to keep that. <laughs> I'd erase the German unit from my mind because I was done talking about it. Uh, but yes, it yep. could have come here. Triple bounce. A little fun thing. Um, yeah. Shall we go ahead to the fall? Yep. Alright, fall 1904. It goes for Berlin and Germany dies. That is sad. Um, Unfortunate. But there yeah, was they go more. for the same tactics in the south. Oh. That's sick. <laughs> Oh, that's these sickos. God, remember when people complained about the bots doing the same tactics repeatedly? <laughs> saying, humans never play like this. Look, top board diplomacy players recognize that sometimes the best moves are the best moves, and you do the same moves again. Hell yes. <laughs> and you make zero progress, despite <laughs> having a potentially guaranteed bit of progress <laughs> you should make. I, I think this... Back. The lesson to take from this, if you have a guaranteed part of the attack, take the guaranteed part of the attack. No, it doesn't matter the if there's from a this better is option. The best players in diplomacy don't do that. Mm. These are the best players in diplomacy. These guys are crushing, at least on online these yes. contexts. Don't, don't, don't at me about world champions. But these <laughs> players are very, very good at diplomacy. And they recognize that the guaranteed attack is often something you just leave dangling in front of your opponent saying, ah, yes. Look, when you trust your opponents, if I'm playing as baddies, just take the guaranteed. But if you're playing as good players, they're going to exploit you. And if you only take the guaranteed, you're gaining the minimum. 
You want to gain the maximum. Yeah, but if you never take the guarantee, then you're, you're giving up so much potential yeah. momentum. Yeah, it's yeah. Don't like... never take the guarantee. Sometimes take the guarantee. Yes, but in this case, I think it would have been better just to take the guarantee than stop. Um... Yes, when they <laughs> covered the move, that when they when they cover the move and they punish you for skimping out of the guarantee, then you should have gone for the guarantee. That's correct Good analysis, <laughs> Captain. <Mew. laughs> no, okay. So what I'm saying, like your thing is, if people go for the guarantee, then yeah, they'll punish you for it, right? In this case, Turkey can't punish that much for you taking the guaranteed move. They can just hold out for a little longer. Is that really more of a punishment than taking a guess every turn that you might lose, and then you'll make no progress at all? It's not, right? You should just take the guarantee. <laughs> I think not supporting Armenia, Sevastopol to Armenia would have been a mistake at this point, even if Turkey had done something different. Maybe. Maybe. Wait. I like I like the support of Armenia. I want to make progress with Russia, too. But I think it's <laughs> really funny. I mean, it's also like, Russia is not taking the guarantee. Maybe they want to keep their alliance with Austria intact, and Austria is saying, I need to be the first person to gain something here. Or Which else. makes perfect sense, dude. It's like, look, man, Russia's going to be on 8th. They're gaining in Kiel. Like, if they support themselves in Armenia and they take Ankara, they're going to be on 9. I'm going to still be on 7. I have a bunch of my units stuck in this war against Italy in the West. Like, Russia's going to get everything. I'm going to get nothing, and then I'm going to die. I can't... I, we can't let that happen. Mm -hmm. Okay, It's so... good alliance play. <laughs> so, bad tactics are good alliance play. That's Captain Meme's takeaway. Is that correct? Mm-hmm. I... I think... Okay. Like, I'm thinking about this more now, right? I think that next turn, Russia is going to help Turkey against Austria. Wow! No way. <laughs> okay, what I think is what I think their tactics should be is to give Austria the build. They support themselves into Armenia, and then they convoy Bulgaria to Ankara with support. That's the alliance play. Yeah, that works. Um, although, like as Russia, once you're in Armenia, you kind of just go, "I want." I want the stuff. I'm going to take the stuff, right? You're, you're an alliance player, and sometimes <laughs> as an alliance player, you give your ally a center. <laughs> yes, but as a balance of power player, I like being more powerful than everyone else. They should respect that about me, um, and allow me to be more powerful. <laughs> But no, I think I'm okay. a power player, Captain Meme. <laughs> I, think, I think you've converted me. I agree. <laughs> The balance of power should be everything is on my side and you have nothing. Uh... That's balance. <laughs> okay. So, no, I genuinely think that Russia could have just been leaking this information to Turkey constantly now that I'm looking at it more. Because, like, as Russia, you do push yourself into Armenia if you want to make progress. And if Austria is demanding, hey, I want to be the first person to make gains here then they're not a good ally for you, right? You can already see that they might not be a good ally for you because they've done things like cover Serbia and just generally... <laughs> I don't know. It's not impossible I... to believe that Turkey guessed right twice in a row. I mean, it's not impossible to believe, but I just think that combined with the fact that Turkey... that Sorry, Russia isn't taking the option that guarantees them progress. It just feels very, very odd to me. I... Okay. I think Turkey made good tactical plays twice in a row. I don't think Russia is sabotaging it. Again, let this be a lesson to everyone. If you are Captain Meme's ally, and <laughs> you don't make the moves that he thinks you should make, even if you're supporting him into a center, he thinks you're sabotaging the alliance, and he's expecting you to stab him next year. Okay, no, but, like, look at it, right? Also, think about the context of this. Because Austria stabbed Turkey, right? That was what yeah. put this in play. Russia maybe didn't want to do that in the first place. But, like, what are they going to do? Turkey couldn't really help them that much against Austria at that point. No, okay, now that I'm saying this out loud, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> they went into Black Sea. They wanted to They wanted to kill Turkey. Well, well, but well, then, but why aren't they killing the... Turkey? They, need the... they are. Dude, they've made... There have been guesses. There have been reasonable tactical guesses every turn from here, and sometimes the guesses go wrong. 
It's been two turns. No, There's it's been no three time. because they they got bounced out of Ankara and Armenia on a guess on the turn before that as well, right? Uh, I mean, three turns in a row. That happens all the time, dude. I, mm, <laughs> it's suspicious. I'm going to continue saying it's suspicious. Um, but we probably shouldn't uh, continue for too much longer because the viewers will get bored of looking at this has one. Had a support into Armenia that would have worked any time on any of these previous turns, guaranteed, and it's steady has gone for guesses, and the guesses have failed every time. Yes. That is true. It's suspicious. <laughs> yes. This is what diplomacy does to him, man. <laughs> this is what like, too much diplomacy does. You start reading into everything, and here's the thing, he's not wrong, it is suspicious! It's the brutal part of this game. Uh, all right, um, so news. we have we have. Oh, let's go to winter. Okay, let's, let's, go, let's to go to winter. winter. We've got power our power rankings. rankings. Do we make the power rankings on the assumption that Russia and Turkey are allied or not? No, they are at <laughs> war. I don't know how many times I need to say this. <laughs> this is not a juggernaut. Uh, all right, Army Saint Petersburg. Um, which yeah, is... what a good build. Man, it's not Army Moscow. But they're on side with the English, right? So... Yeah, but I mean... So you don't want to be that on side with the English. Hmm. Maybe? Like, I don't know. I don't know. I, don't, I, I think there's a chance that if I let England walk into St. Petersburg, they just walk into St. Petersburg, and I'm very happy about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, really? While well, they're fighting France? That feels yeah, like... Yeah, it's a dog. Yeah, but they can't afford to annoy you. Like, I know yeah, yeah. this is you talking and C.T. Yes, take they can, Well, they can always afford to annoy you. They can't afford to get you to attack them. But annoying you doesn't necessarily mean you attack them. You need them against France. Right? <laughs> they need you against France. You both need each other against France, and that's the perfect time to just, like, take a dot off of them. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, like, Norway is useless against France. What's it going to do? Cover the region of the sea? Ugh. Lame. Better. Let me take St. Petersburg and I'll build a fleet in Liverpool. That's way more useful than, like, what, your army in Warsaw? Eh. Alright, fine. Uh, like, I don't know. <laughs> army Moscow would have been able to protect St. Petersburg fine, too, yeah. right? And are you, like, moving it to St. Petersburg? No, you probably don't want to. It's so like, much more aggressive, I've noticed. People react so differently to units being built versus units being moved. Like, Moscow moving to St. Petersburg takes people off so much more than just the build in St. Petersburg. I don't understand why, but that's just how people react, so... Oh, well, fair enough. Also, I mean, I don't think this was rulebook press, so you would they would have been able to talk to each other on build phases, right? Quite often the thing about um, bad reactions to builds versus uh, versus moves is that in the move phase you can discuss that for the entire time. Whereas quite often if you're playing a rulebook press game where press is disabled during um, builds and retreats, you can't talk over your builds. So you, you, you can't blame the person for putting down a build that you don't like as much because you weren't able to tell them that you don't like that as much, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, here that shouldn't apply. Uh, power rankings time, yeah? Power rankings indeed. Who would you put in first? France. Despite the fact that their attack on England is kind of fizzling a little bit? Yeah, still France. Yep, fair enough. Um, second... Do we need any more explanation, or do I just, can I just say France a couple times? I mean, and just, I just say France. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every, every France, time we talk about France, France. just say France. <laughs> France, 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 France. Uh, I think second is Russia, right? You sure it's not Turkey with their alliance? It's a juggernaut, man. <laughs> no, it's, yeah, no, no. it's Russia. I think it's Russia. <laughs> All right. Um, and then third is obviously <laughs> Turkey with their alliance with Russia. With their alliance. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Austria's got nothing. No, I think I think Austria is third, uh, right? And then England is fourth, and then uh, Italy is fifth, and then Turkey is sixth, and then Germany's off the board. Yep. 
Well played, Germany. Good fight. Sometimes you get stuck with the country you don't want to play, and then you get three man spy, and you're out by 04. I have no experience with this at all. Um, none whatsoever. <laughs> I mean, uh, in, the, in the video description, I can post a link to a game that I think. I, are we allowed to post links to games? Um, not at the moment, no. Um, no, I mean, we will not be able to post yeah, it. We, 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 we have done some uh, discussing of certain games prior to our recording here, and that is what Ezio is referencing at the moment. But we cannot talk about that because it's an anonymous game and no one knows that Ezio is in it. Um, well, so... I'm not in it anymore, so... <laughs> No Anyways. one knows that Ezio used to be in it. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. All right. Okay. All right. So uh, there's the power Let's rankings. Say we'll, we say goodbye to Germany on this turn, and we shall go ahead to the spring of 1905. Oh Which my God! Really he supports it into our media. <laughs> hey, look! He did the thing, and guess what? He covered Constantinople again. He could have just walked in, man. He could have just walked in. His previous tactics would have been better. But look how uh, they're not even that much better, right? Against yeah, this but you, you'd rather be a GM being a GM. Yeah, you'd rather be a you would rather be a GM. Yeah, but does right? that really? Like... It matters. It's a difference. His other tactics would have been better. The one turn he switched, he should have stuck to his guns. <laughs> oh my god! All right. Well, at least we confirmed here that this wasn't Russia leaking information to Turkey, probably because probably. they like. They wouldn't have. Uh, that probably is gone. the most. That probably is carrying a lot of weight. <laughs> oh. But yes, I agree. All right. So on the next turn, we're going to see Constantinople support Armenia to Bulgaria, right? <laughs> Someone's gonna work. Uh, it, it would. Uh. Oh please! Oh please! <laughs> Amusingly, Italy is back in the game. Uh, they managed to take Venice with Austrian agreement here. Um, even though Austria could potentially have... No, they couldn't have held it. Because France Austria... tapped them. Yeah, Austrian agreement is quotation marks. I think Austria was like, alright, fine, I shouldn't have stabbed you, I screwed up, and we can make something happen here, because like, I'm going to lose the game if I keep this war up. And so I think Austria is just like, oops, sometimes you screw up. Mm -hmm. And then they're like, well, we're never making progress into Turkey despite this guaranteed attack, so I actually need Italy back on side now. <laughs> yeah. God. Uh, Man, I think Armenia is getting convoyed to Romania, dude. Do you actually think? To Romania? I think Russia. Uh, I mean, we'll broke area. I think Russia's stabbing. <laughs> like, you really do? There's I don't no know. Like... The Chian. You make you can make progress here, right? Um, it's a fifty-fifty on Turkey. Yeah, but holdings. but I don't want I don't want Austria to get it. The... <laughs> yeah, that is actually fair, I suppose. Um, I guess I just always support myself and never support Austria. And then Turkey might just guess that, <laughs> right? or you uh, yeah, tell maybe. Turkey, "Hey, Turkey." I have to support Austria here, but I don't want them to make progress. Please support, hold your unit, and then you support yourself. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yep. That's why I never, like, it's so hard to make these sorts of deals and the leak information, because if, it's so hard to trust anyone in diplomacy ever. <laughs> How do we play this game? Why do we play this game? I feel like what this is why the man? actual world champions and stuff generally have better rapport with the other players than we do. <laughs> this is, uh... Actually being able to trust someone is, like, hugely important hey, to doing well in these tournaments. Um... I have been able to trust people, and it's good, because if I never trusted people, then I would... Like, I can prove that I trust people because I get stabbed. Mm-hmm. Right? If you never got stabbed, you're not trusting people enough. So in order to stab people, it shows that you're trusting them enough. Okay. <laughs> That's a good excuse. Honestly, like, again, if you never trust anyone, you will never get stabbed. Because you'll never make an alliance, and you'll never be in a position to work with anyone, and you'll never get any. Yep. Right? So you have to trust people sometimes. And if you're getting stabbed, if you never get stabbed, you're not trusting enough, there's levels, and like, figuring out who to trust and who not to trust. And some people... 
you can trust that some people you can't. Mm -hmm. Don't trust Captain. Oi. <laughs> hey, you're the sea dot take dot person here. You're the person who's fabricated hours of press to fool one person once, and then you stab them anyways. Okay, yes, that is true. <laughs> but it's... I'm the one who wants my allies to grow because I want them to decide it's better to stick with me than to not attack me. And then you will see dot take dot when you get the chance. I would probably not stab... I would probably not stab Austria here in Russia. Okay. I would probably <laughs> wait a year. Yeah, like I said, I don't think I would stab Austria either. I would say to Turkey, hey, defend Constantinople, and then I would take yeah. Edgar. Um, but I think that's why the best players are better than us, because they'll stab us the turn before we'll stab them. Yeah... Probably. Do you think there's much chance of Austria just going, I'm gonna grab Romania now? <laughs> like, we've got Italy back on their feet, I guess I'm gonna trust them and just go for a Lepanto. <laughs> Wait, no, they can't, know, sorry, can... they can't take Romania. If they take Romania, R Russia retreats into Budapest. Um, yeah, and no I think cover. if Russia, I think if Russia and Austria are at war, Italy will then gladly go to Turkey and Russia and be like, hey, remember the guy that stabbed you and you and me? Now, think of how satisfying it would be if we all killed him. <laughs> yes, fair enough. <laughs> all right. Um, so we haven't talked about the North at all yet. Uh, France moves back to North Atlantic Ocean and they take, take uh, English Channel. Feels like a lot of repositioning without actually any real progress, right? I, I the Irish Sea to English Channel doesn't look like an attack on England anymore. Do you think they're, like, backing off properly? Well, if you're attacking England, why don't you support Brest and the English Channel? Uh, that is a good question. That is a very good question, actually. Um, well, this is clearly France trying to team all trying to say, all right, all right, all right, fine, fine, fine. Good job defending. Well done, well done. You got me, you got me. Mm -hmm. like, I, like, I moved to Norwegian Sea expecting to bounce somehow. <laughs> like, and then I bounced you in Eddy because I hoped you weren't going to cover it. Uh, I don't know, man. But this, like, I I don't I don't see an attack against England as France here. And yet, despite France going for an attack and committing heavily to it, I still think France is in an amazing position. That's how absurd France is. All right, great. Mm -hmm. Well. Uh, let's go ahead to the fall, then? Yeah, let's just see fall. Alright, fall 1905. You are absolutely correct. France was trying to get uh, England back on sides, trying to support them into Kiel here. Um, England does yep. not take the support. They do not trust it. I think that's fair. I think as England, I would be saying, you had better get out of English Channel before we do anything of this, right? Yep. Uh, and sense. hey... As a concession, I might even say we need Mid Atlantic Ocean DMZ from this point on. After you get your fleet south, um, yeah, I don't know whether England, whether France would actually agree to that, but it would be a pretty reasonable condition at this point, I think. Um, yeah, and I mean, there's no reason why England can't just keep attacking France. Like, that's oh, fine. oh my God, I didn't look at the south. <laughs> yeah, dude, you called it. <laughs> No, I said they were convoy to Bulgaria. I wanted them to convoy in with support. Oh, uh, um, okay, sure. Well, you called the convoy out of Armenia mm -hmm. as soon as they have a chance to actually make progress. <laughs> but Turkey is wisely like, yo, dude, I'm going to just support Ankara for the rest of the game. If you guys want to make progress, it's got to be taking Constantinople. <laughs> do you want to let Austria do that? No. Is Austria going to let you do that? Mm-hmm. Good well, luck. Good prediction from Austria here. Uh, blocking Budapest. Yeah, beautifully read. Mm -hmm. um, although they are still in a pretty painful spot now. They have uh, Cilicia moving down to Galicia. Although they get a build from... No, they don't get a build from Munich, because they lost Venice as well. That's Italy's yeah. build. Uh... <laughs> well, I think as Austria at this point, you go to Italy and you say, Hey... I am really, help. really sorry for what I did earlier. <laughs> it's a chugger not help. Um, God, you don't even have a, a second army now to support yourself back into Budapest, so Russia has that guaranteed on the next turn, right? Because you're not building, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, no Russian builds either, though, so the so Romania is slightly vulnerable to them right now. Um, yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> oh, brutal. All right. Is there much else to talk about here? Shall we just move on? Let's just move on. Let's see the builds. All right. Winter 1905. English Channel off the board. I forgot that France was disbanding. Yeah, so now yeah. you, as England, say, okay, that's all right. Now move your goddamn fleet south and then we can... <laughs> okay, can I'm sorry. Bryce just has to go through Mid-Atlantic Ocean off the way. <laughs> <laughs> it's going south, I promise. <laughs> and I mean it this time. It's just how the map works. I'm sorry. I uh, wish Bryce connected the Gulf of Leon, but it doesn't. God. All right. Um... And then uh, that's the ale. No, there's Fleet Naples. Which. Yep. It, does that go for a Lepanto here? Does it go for France? Or goes for Austria, dude. It can absolutely go for Austria, that's true. But then you're fighting as a three fleet uh, Italy against Austria. I feel like that doesn't work very well. Um, I can take Trieste and Greece and then tell Austria, alright, fine, good luck. <laughs> uh, but then, like. How do you even take Trieste and Greece? You can go around Greece with Aegean and Ionian, right? But like Trieste like with Tyrolia and Trieste there? That's... You could go for Albania too, yeah. I think that's just... Well, yeah, that's more likely to work, because obviously uh, Turkey could just it's come Austrian's out Austria's other units, yeah, and Austria's other units have things to do. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I... I don't know. I think Fleet Trieste makes actually taking Trieste quite awkward. Um, and if you get in, you can't do much else from there. So, uh, as Italy here, I'd be pretty tempted to truce out the Austrian if I thought there was some chance I could trust them, which, to be honest, there might, there might not be. Um... <laughs> the, the way you can trust them is to say, pragmatic. Look, Austria is at war with Russia and Turkey right now. Austria probably can't spare any units to mess with me. So, hey, Austria, how about you move your fleet into Adriatic Sea, and then I'll force you to disband it, and you have more armies, Oh, buddy. actually, I do quite like that, because um, Austria kind of has to agree to whatever you say at this point, right? You keep saying that, but nobody actually plays that way, man. I keep expecting people to be like, oh, I'm going to die here if I don't get your help. Yes, I will accept your demands. Well, the and thing is, you saying, have to phrase it in a certain me. way, right? Ooh, why did you stab me? You're the reason I'm in this position. I'm like, anyways. <laughs> Look, you have to phrase that kind of thing in a very specific way, right? If you go to oh, Austria I and you as, say... You will die okay, if uh, I don't help you. Yeah, it, no, if you say it like that, they won't accept, because they'll just go, okay, well, I'll die then. Like, screw you. Um, you have to go, oh, fine. yeah, I see your point, but I want to make sure I'm especially safe against any potential future attack, and I'd like to set up so that we could have a Grey's Alliance moving forward, and that does require you to disband your fleet. <laughs> Nobody believes you're going to have a Great Alliance going forward because he stabbed you. Look, You, you can't put be... the genie back in the bottle. You just gotta be friendly with them after they stab you. You go, oh yeah, we're having a great time here fighting, right? Let's let's just keep on good terms and send each other like the occasional joke or something or joking request saying, hey, we're gonna stop fighting now. It'll be fine, right? Look, I, I understand we're in a war, but like sometimes the opportunity is gonna come. We're gonna have to work together, and I just want you to know, I don't hate you. It's just it's just how things go. I understand. I've played diplomacy before. Yeah. That's the last message I send somebody before I'm at war, usually. Or once I'm at war with them. Mm -hmm. Or, he... <laughs> eat it. You stabbed me and I am crushing you. Get wrecked. That's a very <laughs> That one does not... <laughs> I think that is the worst one to send, yeah. <laughs> See, I mean, my general look... approach is just I stay as friendly as possible, right? I make, like, joking things after someone stabs yeah. me and say, you know, whatever, it's fine. Now we shall be at war! I hate you! Arr, arr, arr. But, like, yeah, make sure it's very clearly... Yeah, telling them you hate them Make sure it's very clearly a joke. Telling them you hate them in text. I'm... <laughs> Alright. Okay. So, step one of diplomacy. Tell your allies and enemies <laughs> you hate them. 
This will lead to better future negotiations. God damn. You can tell that the most recent, like, proper commentary we did was the live one, right? Because I think we've slowly gone insane during that, and then... <laughs> <laughs> no, what's happened is in the months between, I've spent, like, 50 hours playing diplomacy games, Captain. Oh, yeah, that is... <laughs> this is what it does to a man. It really does. Okay, so, for reference here, we are both playing in Imperial Diplomacy at the moment as well, right? Which is, like, yeah. the big map from the previous video. Um, I was looking forward to playing a nice regional power and being on four centers to start and just going, okay, I'll spend each day talking to my four neighbors. And then we make an agreement. Oh, like, me and Ezio agreed, oh, we'll play the same power. And I thought, I'll be nice, I'll let Ezio choose our power. And Ezio chose the largest power on the map. And now all my time is just spent talking to people. This is entirely your fault. <laughs> Like, but, we're both but, insane because of you. <laughs> in, in, in my defense, I did pick the best country. I mean, yes, but it's also <laughs> it's so much work. <laughs> yes, but it's work that's paying off. And it's not just that we're good at diplomacy, it's that I actually picked the right one. The... It is just doing the best. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, doing the best, right? Uh, let me look at your capital a second. All right, no, uh, we should stay on topic. Anyway, um... stay on target. Yeah, we're only what we're in oh five. <laughs> God. All right, all right, all right. Sorry, I I got a sidetrack. I think by going insane. Yep. Um, we're in winter. Uh, English Channel got disbanded. Naples got disbanded. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Or right, Naples got built. Let's move on to moves. Okay. Spring 1906. Yeah. We are now looking at the moves on the current game and not talking about random unrelated ones. Uh, Austria is just letting Turkey back out of the box. And so is Russia. Um, they're working together to do it. <laughs> nice to see some friends. The rat is back! <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I don't think this is a rat. Yeah. So, uh, Austria has said to Turkey, Hey, you know, you can have Bulgaria back. I'm gonna concede it. I just want to kill the Russian at this point, right? And defend myself against that. Turkey, get, but Russia also went to Turkey, hey, I'm going to put you in Bulgaria here um, via convoy, and obviously the convoyed army is much better for attacking anything further than that than putting a fleet in would be, so Turkey takes the Russian uh, move and uses the Austrian offer to make sure that nothing is contesting them, right? To make sure that they are not getting bounced out, they don't need to support that move, so they move into Aegean and Constantinople to give them a good position on Greece as well. Really solid recovery from the Turk in this position. And Armenia moves up to Sevastopol to protect Romania as well. Um, yeah, suddenly looking a lot better. <laughs> yeah, the convoy into Bulgaria is so much better for Turkey than a fleet in Bulgaria East Coast. Yes. That fleet Bulgaria East Coast is just so brutal. For It's only useful against Russia. And it has no pressure on Greece and no pressure on Serbia. It would be amazing for Austria if that could happen. And so it's just really good for Turkey to be in Bulgaria with an army. Yes. Um, and it's just really good for Turkey not to have to use Con to support that as well. Um, oh yeah, getting into a GN simultaneously feels really good. Mm -hmm. uh, Alright, and yeah, uh, Italy appears to be anti-Austria. Looking at the moves, um, so poor old Austria, yeah, this is not looking good. Yeah. Yep, yeah, I think that's all we need to say there. <laughs> What's going on in the north? So, France doesn't even bother trying to rotate stuff down, and England goes into North Atlantic and Irish Sea going, hey... I'm going to make 100% sure you can't stab me here as I take your support into Kiel. But then England doesn't make any other move on Russia, and Russia moves away from uh, St. Petersburg, so I assume this must be somewhat agreed, right? Uh, I, I think between Russia and England, that's agreed, yes. Mm -hmm. And I think that the move into North Atlantic Ocean Irish Sea is not a, I'm going to make sure you can't stab me and say, yes, I'm getting ready to attack you now. Yeah. But then why didn't they yeah. go into English Channel as well? Like, um, because they're worried about Holland. 
Yeah, but if that's the case, why don't you let Russia keep Kiel? You just support hold yourself in Holland and go into English Channel. Um, well, well, bear with me here. I took a dump. Okay. <laughs> so, as Russia, why do you offer that dump in the first place? Because I want to make peace with England, and I'm making games in the South anyways, so I don't need to make that many more. It's totally fine. I want England to be strong against France. Yeah. Why, then, is Russia setting up a convoy with Livonia and Baltic? <laughs> this is, uh... Because Livonia is just the, an effective place to head south, I guess, into Russia more easily. Mm -hmm. Still covers Warsaw. Like, Moscow is, like, Livonia is better than Moscow most of the time, if you're not worried about Sebastopol. Or Ukraine. Like, if you're south, it's fine. Livonia's fair. If you're south, it's fine. And I think Russia's south is fine. Yeah. Alright, well, um... So, yeah. Also, I guess maybe England just knew that France was self-balancing in English Channel, so they couldn't go there. Um, well, or if they went there, they couldn't take RFC at the same time. Now they've got a two-pronged attack on uh, Mid-Atlantic Ocean, so if France wants to hold that, they can't contest English Channel on this next turn. Yep. Uh, all right. And England are building right, so you just do that. Just build the fleet in Eddie or London, and he can get North Sea, and yeah, I mean, France's position is, for the first time, not looking rock-solid anymore. Yes. It's looking but, quite problematic. But I'm going to reiterate this. He is still France. Mm -hmm. So you can never count him out. Yeah. Yep. Does uh, this game I... have an end date? Yes, nineteen twelve. End of nineteen twelve. Yeah. Um, okay. All right. Shall we go ahead to uh, fall? Let's do it. All right. Fall nineteen oh six. Oof. Oh. Um. So maybe that move into kill was a stab. Because Russia then immediately takes French support into Kiel and takes Denmark at the same time. But then if it was a stab, surely you protect Denmark. You go, I'm not going to just... Well, surely you would have got in with more than that, right? <laughs> Instead... well, yeah, it looks like it was... No, it looks like it was agreed. It looks like the deal was that Berlin would support Kiel to Munich? Wait, but then why did Holland support Kiel hold... Or did it support Kiel? Hold, or did it support Berlin into Kiel? Uh, let me it looks Kiel like hold. Holland supported Kiel. Yeah, Holland support Kiel hold. So, they, but they didn't hold Kiel. They moved it south, which is why they lose it then. Um, wow. Big misorder. Mm -hmm. And... Because i convinced that's just a misorder. Yeah. It seems like an odd one. Um, I... Also, like, I don't know why Russia chose to stab. The like they let England like... into Kiel willingly. They went out into Baltic, right? Yeah. And then presumably, maybe England had even offered them Denmark in in return anyway. Maybe they hadn't, and they thought, "Well, I'm gonna stab for essentially one, right? I'm gonna get Denmark and get take." Keel back. I... Yeah, but it's a play where Russia's position is getting really strong here, man. This is true. Um, if you build Fleet St. Petersburg North Coast off of this, then you got, you've got a pretty decent anti-English position, and you've got probably an ally in France, right? So, suddenly well... it looks like it could be reasonable to attack England despite the French, because the French have been pushed back so much. Um, that you could make the games more quickly, it'd still be dangerous. Yeah, the thing about Russia's position is that Turkey's building too. Ooh, that is true. So Turkey takes Bulgaria, right? No one even bothers to contest it from them, and they get over into Greece with a convoy. So they even have a good line on Serbia as well now. Um... Yeah, <laughs> but, but do you think they just plop down two fleets and take the Black Sea? Ooh. Uh, Russia's on 10, right? Yeah, you have to contest Russia at this point. Or, or do you? I mean, you could just go, hey, Russia is going to be fighting... Like, if Russia and France demolish England together, then Russia gets locked up in a war with France. Maybe I just want to grow as much as I can in that time. Russia's on 10. Yeah, that is a lot. <laughs> that 
That is really a lot. Even if Russia and France demolish England together, quote unquote, Russia gains what Norway and Eddie off of that. Mm -hmm. So that means Russia's at twelve, and then Russia just needs like Vienna, Munich, fourteen. Russia only needs four more to just win. And again, this is a nineteen uh, twelve end date. There's only like five more years in this game. If we don't get a coalition against Russia, there's no way. Like I'm getting to fourteen centers without killing Russia. Uh, this is nineteen twelve end date. Yeah, so we got six. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, six years. Uh, end of nineteen twelve. Yeah, because you have six years. Yeah, so um, we've got a while. That's but... true. Six years is ages. See, I could see. Turkey just deciding, hey, I need to eliminate... No, because you don't want to eliminate Italy in this position. You want to say, hey, Italy, go and attack France for me. And I'll attack Russia, and then we can, like, expand Yeah, we can clean up Austria. Austria. We have a couple armies here, right? But, like... Yeah. Okay, I'm actually liking your fleet con fleet ink uh, approach. Although... Right. Uh, do... Just force Black Sea, force Armenia. Yeah... Um, so... Austria is not going to attack you. Austria is still begging for you to be on the side. will be so happy. How do you force Armenia if you build fleet and fleet com? Uh, well, you, so you force Black Sea in the spring. You force Armenia in the fall. Oh, I see. As in con out to uh, Black Sea and then support. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that makes sense. I, I'd i usually want to take Armenia with an army for obvious reasons, right? But I think fleet makes yeah. sense. Yeah, um, yeah, I mean, you have to build a fleet and Ankara, so... Might as well. Plus, you have your armies in Bulgaria and Greece already. I suspect Austria will assist you with capturing Romania. So mm -hmm. you can probably get into Sevastopol from Romania with Armenian support. And, yeah. like, obviously you don't love that, but it's, it just works out. Austria's in the kind of position now where they will just go screw you to someone, and it feels like that someone would be Russia. Um, given that Russia's stab on them was what caused all of this. Uh... Well, yeah, because Russia's the one person they didn't stab. Probably. <laughs> that is true. And yet, they stabbed them? God. Man, it's almost like if you put all of your eggs in one basket, and that basket knows that your eggs are in it. This analogy is not going to work. Anyways, point <laughs> it's is... It's a good thing we don't have you... sentient baskets. <laughs> point <laughs> is, if you have only one ally, and that ally knows they can, they have power over you, and can get a coalition against you, they might do that. Mm -hmm. If they're a good player, they probably will, and then you'll be really sad. Yes. All right. Well, uh, I think that about covers everything. Shall we go to Windsor? Yeah, let's see it. All right. Um, and actually, Ooh. I was saying earlier that the attack on Trias probably wouldn't net um, Italy very much. So it's actually looking like a decent position, despite them having three fleets and one army, uh, just because of how much of a mess the rest of Austria is right now. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, that's why he's a village idiot, and we're just sitting here commentating. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love that the name village idiot, like, in that sentence. Is... <laughs> anyway, uh, Army Moscow, Army Warsaw for Russia. Good on them for building Army Moscow again. It looks like they're not There's committing to attack against uh, England, though. Right? There's an army in Ukraine. It can't, you can't afford to... Yeah, that's fair. Um, lots of disbands for Austria. Uh, they're keeping on army Ukraine to say screw you Russia. In fact, they're keeping on all of their units that are next to Russian, like <laughs> the Russian yep. area of their homeland. Um, and uh, Turkey builds Con Smyrna, so they're not going straight for a Black Sea. That's real scary. As as Turkey here, you can probably say to Russia, "Hey, I would like you out of Black Sea. Please support yourself back to Sev." Right. But actually, how do you even enforce that? Like, they could convoy themselves into Ankara. <laughs> Although, God, that would be a bad idea, um, given that Austria really? has a unit in Ukraine. <laughs> Is uh, it that bad of an idea? Actually, I let's don't say, know. Let's say, yeah. right, like... so we're, we're doing power rankings, right? We're doing power yeah, rankings yeah, yeah. right now? Uh, I mean, Russia so... is top of the power rankings, surely, right? Russia is on 10 supply centers. Yes. The next highest is 6. With... And then there's 3 powers at 5. And then there's Austria. Yeah. And I would say, even with the France bonus, a 10 center Russia probably beats a 6 center France. <laughs> and looking at the builds, Fleet Smyrna instead of Fleet. It's not even Army Smyrna, it's Fleet Smyrna. That's just... That is so pro Russia. 
Yeah. I don't know, like, as Russia, if you do convoy into Ankara here, yes, you're going to have a nightmare dealing with the, the Austrian units, but what can Turkey do about that, like, ever? They are just attack screwed. Attack you in Budapest and Romania. Yeah, yeah, they can attack you there, fine. But how do they deal with you being in their homeland? Like, you can just... They will never be able to get rid of that unit. Well, well, so what What do we think the tactics are going to be from Turkey here? Because they might be able to convoy back into Smyrna. Ooh, or that actually, would be Eastern Med. Yeah, that would Smyrna's be a way probably to going to be Eastern Med. Right? Mm-hmm. Or, like, convoy Bulgaria back to Smyrna. Well, after, like, they take Serbia in the spring. But no, if you build these fleets, then you are anticipating attacking Italy, and Italy is anticipating yeah. you attacking, right? And that's just, that's that's what these moves tell me. And so if I'm Russia, I'd probably say, yeah, but dude, go do it. <laughs> and you just let like, them do it, yeah. Go party. Like, yeah, my fleet's in the Black Sea for now, but, like, I need to bounce in Sev to, to disband Ukraine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but as Turkey, can you not just say, hey, please put Black Sea in Sev? Like, support it in or something. <laughs> Yeah, I can even do that. And as long as my fleet's in Sev, I'm going to have a stab on you eventually. Mm hmm. Well, all right. So, uh, Russia is top of power rankings, right? Who is second? Is it France? Russia's top of the power rankings. Yeah, it's still France. Yep. I mean, France is actually on the second highest number of senses. So, even with the France bonus, like that, even without the France bonus, they'd probably still be in second. Um, yeah, but they're France. Munich is open. Italy's been solid with them. So. Mm -hmm. Seems fine. Yeah, England's position against them is okay, but it doesn't... They don't actually... They can't take anything. Yeah, right? England getting stabbed by Russia there was real brutal. Yes. And it, it's just so... I don't know. It, it's odd to me that Russia has... Well, I'm saying it's odd to me that Russia hasn't followed it up. I see the army in Ukraine. I see why they didn't follow it up, right? But I feel yeah, like but... if I was Russia and I just stabbed England, I would still need to put something in St. Pete. So maybe you go without the army in Warsaw, you use pressure to cover that, and you put something in St. Pete. Yeah, and it costs you so much tempo. And it's like, since you're on Tencent or Russia, do you think you're going to hold everything? No, probably not. <laughs> right? It's like, at this point in the game, you expect people to start coming back for you. Like... Obviously, if England and France keep fighting, neither one of them are going to get big enough to fight Russia. Mm -hmm. So, I expect the two of them have to work things out very, very quickly in order to actually make pressure against it. I wouldn't be surprised to see a complete about face from England here. Right? North Sea to Skagerrak, Helgoland, uh, Holland to Helgoland, English Central to North Sea, now to Norwegian Sea. Um, let France into Holland, let them bounce Munich, and then hopefully... He, um, make him take Kiel from Holland, you take Denmark, etc. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Man, maybe France is first, dude. <laughs> no, I'm not putting a 6 cents of France over a 10 cents right. of Russia. All right, fine. I Especially, accept. okay, accept. If, it's, if Turkey had built Ankara, Constantinople, yes, I would have put France above Russia. Um, but they didn't. Yeah, so. they didn't. I, 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 Man, how does Russia ever win this? Like, Russia wins this game by chaos at the end, and then he squeaks it out after everyone's been attacking him for years. Mm. But I, I look at this board, everyone's right? going to attack Russia, man. Except Turkey, I guess. Yeah. Well, we'll see. Uh, who comes we'll after France in the power rankings? Uh, uh, Turkey? Turkey? Yeah, I would say that's pretty reasonable. Turkey is not getting attacked by Russia, probably. And Turkey is probably going to have a good stab on Russia at some point, probably. And so Turkey can grow from it. Italy has got to be depressed seeing those two fleets get popped down. Um, mm -hmm. And then it's... And then it's... England's never going to win this game. Because France not is too France strong? Is there. I feel yeah. like England has a shot if Turkey and, and Italy both pivot. So if Turkey pivots north and Italy pivots to France, then England gets yeah. their shot. If, but that's it. if Italy and Turkey can make, Fran can make peace and force France to cover against Italy, that's England's shot. 
Mm. Um, does England have more of a shot than Italy or not? No. Italy is gonna Italy could fight for the Balkans. Yeah. Right, you make games against Russia from there. Alright, so that's our power rankings then. Um Russia first, despite what Ezio is saying now. <laughs> uh France oh, no, second. I, I, you convinced me, you convinced me, you convinced me, it's fine, it's okay. fine. Turkey third, uh, Italy fourth, England fifth, and Austria down in last. We didn't mention that, but yeah, Austria yeah. is basically yeah, yeah. dead at this point. Um, yeah, Austria is last for sure. All right, so into spring 1907. Right. They didn't cover Sevastopol. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Right, you can just take Sevastopol from Moscow. Yeah. Because they were attacking from Romania, and they would rather Austria retreat to... They'd rather Austria end up in Sevastopol than in Romania. Oh, yeah, 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 that makes sense. Okay, and they managed to get Vienna at the same time. Italy, seeing those Turkish fleets go down, panics and goes, okay, I need to support Austria now, but it's too late, right? Um... So they yeah, I mean, I assume if I were Italy, right, I would have expected Turkey to go and hit yes. Russia, and so they could have been solved. Right? So I think it's fair to be like, ah, god damn it. You do notice that um, Turkey did have the thing in mind that we were talking about of that convoy into Ankara. They go, I'm not yeah. going to allow that to happen. Um, although maybe they're also doing it under the guise of, oh, I need to cover Armenia because we're letting Austria into Sevastopol. <laughs> yeah, well, that makes sense. Mm hmm. I think that's a pretty fine place to have a fleet, actually. Just station it at anchor and say, okay, it's going to stay here until you get out of Black Sea. Uh. Okay, so Russia gained Vienna and Serbia. Mm hmm. Russia lost Denmark. The, the Denmark to Sweden part is kind of interesting. Um, Looks agreed. I think Russia saw what I was looking at, which is if England goes hard against Russia. Russia doesn't continue winning. Mm -hmm. So, I need to keep you on side. Fine. I'll let you take Denmark. Like, I, I understand I'm on 10 centers here on 5. You're in a big war. I took Denmark from you. Okay. Okay, fine. You can have it back. That's understandable. Yeah. I'm... This yeah. is unrelated. I'm curious what English Channel is doing, because it doesn't have a hold marker. Um, oh, it's supported breast. Never mind, that's not uh, not relevant at all. But yeah, I am a little worried as Russia here that England and Denmark, especially since they... Well, no, England and Denmark just means that England might just keep coming. Uh, yep. But then yeah, they that's... didn't go to Norwegian Sea, so... They didn't go to Norwegian. Um, Holland just held. France is still being clearly annoying and aggressive. France is back in Munich. So now France and England are both fighting over Kiel, and so maybe the two of them will say, hey, we can let Russia keep it. Mm hmm That's tough. Yeah, well, uh, that's pretty much everything that's happening here. Shall we go ahead to the next phase? Yeah, let's see the fall. All right, fall 1907. Okay, they did successfully agree that not Russia would have it. Yep. They... And uh, France doesn't walk in behind... Uh, behind England there, so... They appear to be working together, and England got into Norwegian. But <laughs> France does try to take English Channel. <laughs> yeah, but here's the Turkish flip. Now Turkey's in fleet Ooh. and fleet on... Yes. Um, Turkey's also getting a build. It's presumably Army Smyrna going into Armenia. Um, Russia can't build Fleet Sevastopol, so now Turkey takes Black Sea, bounces Armenia, might even force the disband in Black Sea. That's tough. Um, uh, Italy backed out of Albania, not convoying in, supporting. Looks agreed. They're saying, yeah, Russia's just going to win this game if we don't get our shit together. Yep. So, boom. <laughs> Well, yeah, interesting. Seems and like England and France are coordinating. Yeah, no. Yeah, seems pretty solid. Uh, and poor old Russia is gonna have a bad time. 
Yeah, I mean, it's going to be rough. And this is why Russia's position is like, even a, even a huge Russia, a 10 center Russia is so hard, man, because you can't hold your centers. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, At least as long as Turkey's the game. If you have a 10 center Russia that's eaten all of Turkey, then you have a better chance. Yes. Shall we go to Winter 07? Yeah, Russia's still, I think, building one. Um, they right, lost... Because they didn't gain Serbia. They didn't gain Serbia. They gained Vienna only, and they lost Denmark and Kiel. And so even though Kiel got popped, they're not building. It's interesting that Russia supported themselves back to Romania. So they actively gave Serbia yeah, to they the were, Turk. Yeah, they were trying to, um, to keep Turkey in the game, right? To make keep Turkey strong and say, hey, you have a chance to win if we stay allied. Um, right? I'm not actually that strong here. I'm under so much pressure in the north. We can stay on side. We can eat Italy together. Just, right, you can take Ionian and stuff, make your make your progress. Mm -hmm. And then Turkey decided here, no, I actually think I'm better off stabbing you here. Yep. Reasonable. I think it's a, I would, I would have stabbed him this spring, so <laughs> stabbing the fall seems good. All right, let's go to Winter 07 then. Um, Army Smyrna, as you said. Uh, double army from England. Army Edinburgh, oh. Army London. That's how you make French France. Let's go. Mm -hmm. Um, and Army Marseille from France. So, <laughs> lots of armies yeah. this turn. This is how England can win, right? You get your armies convoyed, you get Sweden, St. Pete, Moscow, and Warsaw. You get your fleet in the Baltic Sea, so you can get your nice convoys in. Yeah. Um, yeah, dude. But France did just try and take English Channel off you still, so there's still, like... <laughs> you wouldn't do that again. Yeah, if you try and convoy stuff over the North Sea, you have to risk giving that up. We'll see whether that yeah. that happens. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead to spring of nineteen oh eight. If backstabber loads for me, which it just did. It's not loading for me either. All right. Well, it has successfully loaded for me. Um... <laughs> France is back. It's France. Yep. It's France. Oh it's my God. really, really France. English Channel to Wales. No. <laughs> he tried to make peace, man. Look, Russia's going to win this game. Uh. We got to stop him. <laughs> Oof. That's just so painful for England. I mean, this is. This is just unrecoverable. Um, There's yeah, a convoy I'll... to Wales coming. You lost Kiel, you lost Holland. Yes. I told you, man. It's fucking France. <laughs> oh, but, like, oh. God, I... France is so stupid. We should never play classic diplomacy again. <laughs> We should instead play Era of Empires, the new No, we're variant. not. We're not. We're not talking about that. We're not talking about that. We agree. We're not going to talk about that. <laughs> not yet, okay. Not yet. Um, but yeah, so it, it's just a really painful turn for England. France supports the Russian unit into Kiel as well, which is doubly... I don't even know that Russia should have done that. Because, like... Well, they need to get England on side to even hold against France now. Um, although I guess in that position you're just clutching at whatever straws you can get, right? Uh, the the English tries to convoy tw out twice, fails to convoy. I think relies upon the fact that a stab against them from France would be pretty ineffectual because they have so many armies on the island, right? Um... And they're going, okay, well, it's going to be fine. And then France goes, okay, well, you go back to Wales, and then we'll be friends again. <laughs> like, we'll be able to move, move Honestly, on. I think France should not have supported Berlin and Tequil here. Do you think... What? I think that they should have supported Denmark and Tequil. Just to get the army off the island. Yeah, get your convoy to Wales. Mm -hmm. uh, I could see it. I think there's a big argument to be made that um, having fewer enemy armies in Germany is a good thing, uh, especially, yeah. like, I don't think France is anticipating Russia being on side for very long. I think they're anticipating Russia being on side now and then never again. <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I, 
I'm just still amazed they managed to convince England to go to Wales. That's like... Uh, I mean, maybe before... I, I think they were saying, hey, England, if you get out of English Channel, I'll be able to pivot south against Italy. That's what I'll do. Yeah. But, God, I would not have trusted this. <laughs> We never trust anyone. Uh, like, yeah, I don't know. Test. I say that without seeing the press, right? It's possible there was some very trustworthy press going on. <laughs> but... And, like, as England, right, if, you, if you're going to win this game, you need France to go south. Yes. Like, if France just keeps attacking you, you are never going to win. So I think it makes sense to say, well, I need that to happen for me to win, so I guess I'll go out on a limb and hope that it happens. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, as England, maybe you do just keep attacking Russia here as well, because you need to make sure you're not disbanding too much, right? And you've oh, got your I guaranteed can't. attack on Sweden. Uh, um, what? No, uh, you do have the attack. I mean, okay, I think you do that. I think you take Sweden still, but I think that's not attacking. Oh, Russia, it's not so. guaranteed, actually, because they have Army Kiel. But, like, Army Kiel is getting cut by France, killing it, right? <laughs> this is, uh... Yeah. Uh... But yeah, I think you do want to take Sweden. Maybe you go to Russia and you say, hey, I need Sweden so that I don't just collapse and France wins this game. Um, I mean, as France, though, I think I might keep Russia propped up for a second, keeping the boogeyman. Mm -hmm. Right, let Italy and Turkey keep fighting him. I don't want Italy to come mess with me, so... Yeah, I mean, it's incredible how much difference one turn makes of Turkey just turning around taking Black Sea off of Russia... I think just that by itself has made Russia appear not a threat to me anymore. Like, I look at this board yeah, and I say France is top of the power rankings by a long, 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 long way. Um, yeah. And, uh, I agree. Yeah. It's just, like... <laughs> it's just a huge change. I don't think Russia is a boogeyman anymore anyway. Um, I just don't think that's a... <laughs> Like, that's a reasonable argument to be made now. Oh, I'm interested in this convoy into Albania by the Italian. Um, it seems anti-Turkish. Mm, yeah. It's a little anti-Turkish. It's like... How do you get uh, Puglia into any useful place? Yeah, if you have to be double support holding Trieste, then there isn't... Really All right, Rome, to. Tuscany, Piedmont, Aurelia. Eh, or I just can't play, and that's fine. Mm -hmm. But as Turkey, surely you don't like this very much. Um... I don't love it, but it's not like... I don't like it when other people make efficient moves. <laughs> yeah. I mean, as Turkey, I really want Italy to rotate those goddamn fleets out and attack France now. <laughs> or else yeah, like, and we're I gonna think, lose. I think he's gonna feel free to have Ionian move out to Turney and Sea here. Mm -hmm. My fleets are clearly not going after Italy anymore, but I have priorities I'm against Russia, so Italy's probably got time. Yep. All right, well... Balls uh, was Italy, you don't want to walk out of Ionian, right? Turkey's still on six. That is right? true. Turkey, and Turkey has you walk out of Ionian. Um... <laughs> yeah. Right, if you walk out of Ionian and Turkey knows about it and walks into Ionian behind you, then you're in, like... You've lost Ionian once this game. Losing it again is killer. Yes. Uh, shall we go ahead to fall? Yeah, let's see it. Alright. Um, I may speed us up a little bit more towards the end of this, because the aforementioned uh, Imp Dip game is adjudicating in an hour and 15 minutes. Um, and I, <laughs> and I haven't yeah. talked enough to certain people. <laughs> oh, no. Um, All right. do um, you want to no, 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 it's fine. It? We'll, we'll keep going. Uh, I don't okay. think it will take us too long. But you were absolutely right that France tried to prop up Russia, right? They tried to support Hold Kiel, and then they did a sneaky little, oh, I'll take Berlin while that's happening. Russia not having that, going for Berlin um, to bounce it. And England takes Kiel back at the same time, uh, positioning everything they can against France. But everything they can is not a hugely effective line, because it's France. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Um, Russia pivoting things into position, getting Galicia into Cilicia, um, Ukraine into Galicia, and losing ground to the Turk and the Italian. Um, Italy taking the build there, which I think is a good decision on the Turkish front. Uh, Alright, you want to 
give Italy the space to build fleets and go against France um, without them having to leave Ionian open. Yes, but I, I mean, I think just making peace with Italy is important. I think that remains a priority, and so it's okay to give Serbia. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think they, I think giving Serbia is is like a good thing on that because it lets yeah. them build a fleet and go against France. That's like, yep, yep. yeah, um, and you're hoping that eventually they'll move that Venice fleet. Out and use that too. <laughs> that Venice fleet has been there since almost the well, not the beginning of the game, but since they it's been there for a off. while. Yeah, since yeah. the recapture, right? There's been a fleet there. So, yep. Uh, is there anything else to talk about here? Um, I think if you look at the north, the tactics between England and France are going to be brutal. France isn't going to run away with that. Um, like, England is only down one, um, and it's just, it's going to take so long for France to get anywhere with the army in Liverpool, North Atlantic Ocean, Wales, and London, and North Sea. Like, France doesn't make progress there. That is true. If France does get a build, right? It then has to yep. co build in Brest and cover Mid-Atlantic, because otherwise you've got a hole in your line. Um, yeah, and England does have a disband. So... That's like Denmark? that. This event is going to be important. Yeah, I think Denmark, like, you're at war with France now, but like, we've seen that Russia is an opportunistic little bastard <laughs> and it's going to try to take whatever. So, if you disband Denmark, like, you think Baltic Sea just walks back I, in? I don't think Russia dots me as England here because if they do, they lose, right? That like France is it's right, Russia's so losing in the south. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah. Uh, well... But I think I've spent too much time talking to you as a balance of power player, and I think other people will disrespect the whole board winning thing <laughs> too much. Alright, but let's see, let's see the dispense. Alright, let's go to Winter 1908, another power rankings turn. Fleet Naples on the board, which I think as, as Turkey would Hopefully have preferred to worse. see Fleet Rome, but it doesn't... Obviously, yeah. Um, Army Liverpool off instead of Army Denmark. Jesus. I guess, like, you already you still have a lot of units on the back, honestly. Like, Army Liverpool doesn't do that much against France. Well, it's so-so, right? Because if you if you have Army Liverpool, you have every space covered, you can potentially take a guess and force yourself into an Irish or English channel here, right? Without risking a dangerous retreat. Um, this is assuming that Brest is covering Middle Atlantic Ocean, but yeah. In fact, it's not even a guess. You can just go for Irish Sea, right? Although, yep. um, and if you take Liverpool off, you suddenly can't do that anymore. You're on the defensive. You have to self bounce or something, or like, I I don't know that. That's a, maybe England is saying, "Hey, Army Denmark is my only way to win this game because I need somewhere to expand after we've dealt with France," right? Um, and I think that's kind of reasonable. They're just not looking to make much progress because they can't make a ton of progress anyway. Uh, yeah, actually, now that I look at it, that's the reason, right? <laughs> you, you're not getting dots as England. So if you want to win the game, you need to be in Denmark. Um, and I guess Denmark supports Old Kiel as well, which is kind of valuable. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right, uh, power rankings. What are your thoughts? Um, France, Turkey, Russia, uh, Italy, England. Uh, yes, and we need to say goodbye to the Austrian um, because they good are now out of the game. It was a good start for them, but not a. <laughs> it all came crumbling down with that Russian stab. Yeah, as it so often does with Austria. Mm hmm. All right, so France, Turkey, Russia, Italy, England. Let's go ahead to spring of 1909. <laughs> I think Russia expected England to take uh, Denmark off, and I'm now responding to that. Looks uh, like it. Yep. Um, Italy pivoting. 
that's actually pretty like important i think um i mean that's very important yes. obviously <laughs> sorry i didn't when i mentioned him if i didn't mean to kill any enthusiasm you had for the game <laughs> Uh, no, it does. No, I'm, I'm thinking, mm -hmm. like, how how does this Italian stab go? Good question. A stab. I don't know. I mean, I assume it's stab. They've been pretty pretty well allied the whole game. Like, they haven't messed with each other at all. But France is getting close to winning. It's There's not that much time left in the game. If Italy wants a chance, Italy's got to take, like, Marseille and Spain and Portugal. Mm-hmm. So, what are we thinking the winning score is? 10? Probably. I mean, France is on 8. They're going to go on 9 here because England didn't Kiel. protect Kiel. Well, Russia had to protect Kiel as well for that to work, and Russia was busy convoying themselves over to Sweden. <laughs> Interestingly, England keeps uh, France out of Mid-Atlantic Ocean, despite that probably being France saying, hey, I'm going to back out. Is that? No, maybe that's not. Um... But yeah, that means that there is now nothing adjacent to Marseille or Spain. Uh, it's a case where like France says, hey, I'm backing out. Please don't bounce me in Mao. And England looks at this and says, yeah, because you're moving Brest into Mao. I can read the board. <laughs> right? I'm going to bounce you and I'll, I'll bounce Brest back. And then France actually was moving Irish Sea back. So that's what I expect that negotiation looked like. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think that's pretty accurate we're gonna see italian fleets in leon and west after this turn um france does have the one turn to move back and defend themselves and you best bet they're supporting themselves into mid atlantic ocean this turn <laughs> um the problem is they don't really have any armies they can pull back without risking stuff right uh their entire line right now like, everything is in Germany, and because they don't own North Sea, Belgium and Holland would be under threat if they abandoned that. They need units on Kiel to keep Kiel. They have three enemy units around that one. Uh, I think this might be a bit dicey for them. And meanwhile, Turkey's just growing there in the corner. <laughs> Taking Sevastopol as well. Um, yeah, and if Italy... Commit super hard to the West, then Turkey's getting out of the box. But I suspect that Turkey and Russia are going to flip back onto Turkey quickly. Uh, you mean Italy, Russia? Or... Italy and Russia. Italy and Russia, yes, are going to work against Turkey pretty soon here. I think that's probably true, yeah. Because in order for either of them to have the chance, they can't be letting Turkey get this big, like... Turkey will just be able to poke them from behind at the end and ruin their games. Uh... Not just poke them, right? Just be well, at yes. war with them, right? <laughs> He's going to be on seven with a bunch of armies and fleets. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So shall we move to fall? Let's do it. All right. Oh, yeah, fall yeah, minus Italy immediately reacts. Uh, doesn't even go into Leon on West and Western Med. Yeah, just says, I can't win with Turkey like this, so I guess I gotta do a thing. Man, I kind of assumed that they would well, go into Leon and West and attack Turkey at the same time, right? Because I feel yeah, like that's your win like, play as, as Italy. Yeah. You've got to try and do something about France. Um, God, France is building still, man. Do you even get anything? Oof. Yeah, and I mean... France oh, Russia's just... dead. Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, look at the look. Let's stay on the east for a second. Mm -hmm. um, Russia takes Romania, but Turkey moved Sevastopol into Moscow, which Russia did not cover. So even though Russia retook Romania, Russia lost Moscow and Sevastopol. Yeesh. And like yeah. this is like Turkey could have just walked into Sevastopol with the fleet as well <laughs> they, them leaving it open was actually a really really smart play because the army there is so much more useful than a fleet would be um yes. I, well that's pretty solid play from, from the Turk there but yeah they're getting attacked by everyone uh, and they clearly predicted it um, with their defensive moveset but God, I don't think it matters. Like, if you look at the north, 
Russia is stabbing England. Um, which is just going to give the game to France, right? <laughs> they take Denmark with support from Sweden here. Um, and... Oh. Yeah. Because if Russia goes hard against England here, then yes. But if Russia does like a half thing where he takes Denmark, fine, and then goes after Kiel, there's still a chance. Yeah. France has got a lot of armies. France is... Yeah, the problem is as well, Russia has isolated their Berlin unit, right? They can yes. lose Berlin now um, because they've pushed that Baltic unit forward. Uh, and it doesn't even manage to disband the army Denmark. I think this must have been triggered by England keeping that army Denmark. Russia goes, what the hell are you doing keeping army Denmark? I'm going to take army Denmark off the board no matter what it takes. <laughs> and then England goes, no, I'm going to put it in Norway instead. <laughs> instead of defending against France, I'm putting New York sure anything useful, yeah. Mm -hmm. and... and then France, meanwhile, is like, hey, England, I'm not going to attack your mainland anymore. I'm going to be fine. Presumably was expecting Ulf of Leon Western Matt needed to play around it. Yeah. Realized he was building, so can build Fleet Marseille anyways. And can now probably also mess with Italy. Stay safe from the south, stay safe from the north, make gains, win the game. Yeah. France. <laughs> All right, well, shall we go into the winter? Sure. All right. Um, winter oh, 1909. Oh man, England's Wait, been doing so. Russia had a bill. <laughs> uh, some things can't be explained with math. <laughs> this is the weirdest position I've ever seen anyone manage to build in. Um, lost Moscow and Sevastopol, gained Romania, gained Denmark. I guess something got popped. Probably. I don't. I can't oh, think fleet. where it was, but that's uh, fleet oh Sev. fleet Sev. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um. They do manage to build Army St. Pete, and they build Army St. Pete, so they are still... Well, I said that they're not, like, committing to killing England or anything. Yeah, they're not building <laughs> fleet St. Yeah, Pete, yeah, North Coast. Yeah. <laughs> God. This, the things that people do in diplomacy, man, once they get tilted, is just absurd. Because <laughs> I would not have been surprised to see fleet St. Pete, North Coast. I'd have been like, ah, yeah, ah, we've all been there. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, God. Pick yep. somebody... Alright, great. Okay, um, so Fleet Marseille from from the French, despite the fact oh, that the yeah, Italian didn't up. actually go against them, just having Tyrrhenian and Tunis is gonna frighten There's the French There's potential there. Yeah. Well, it's just like, it's frightened, but also, how does France not win this game from this position? France is probably gonna get from France isn't gonna lose practically anything they have. Um, so France is gonna get to 10 centers, and, like, France loses by not defending against Italy and letting Italy attack. Um, France is going to hold off against England, right? There's no risk there. Um, so France is safe in the north. Now let's be safe in the south and let's push our armies to the east. Easy. Mm -hmm. Let's get the dub. All right. Yeah. I mean, shall we go ahead and see? Yeah. All right. Spring 1910. So three years left in the game. Um, Italy is not attacking France any any further, so they are just doing what they can to attack Turkey here. Turkey um, got too big, indeed. And Russia uh, actually guessing this pretty is well. Why, um, but... This is why you don't want Turkey out of the box, man. Yep. This game, because it's so hard once Turkey gets out of the box. <laughs> oh God, England's not even in North Sea anymore. No. Oh man! Yeesh. I mean, that's probably good play from uh, from France. They're predicting that North Sea would come down to English Channel, right? You're yeah. deliberately moving into Belgium to make sure that you have the <laughs> shot at there. But like, you massively prefer Fleet English Channel here than Fleet North Sea, I think, because it frees up so many of your armies. Uh, it's it's not that much of a difference, actually, right? Fleet English Channel versus Fleet North Sea for you. Because, uh, like, Army Holland, Army Belgium versus Army Belgium Fleet Brest, like, lots of units got to defend against it. Now, Mid Atlantic Ocean's, like, kind of at risk. Yeah, Not fair. Really if if Italy it. does jump you, then this is a big problem. Um. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and again, like, Italy's still at six, and Russia's turning around to try to mess with 
Turkey. I haven't looked at the tactics too closely. I kind of assume that Turkey is invincible, so it probably doesn't matter. Uh, I do notice that Russia just walked into Norway, um, so yep. England's going to go down another one. They might take off London, but like if they do, they have... Eh. Uh, I mean, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> France is France. All right, let's go to the fall. All right, full 1910. Uh, so, a whole lot of nothing ends up happening except France getting into English Shell. Is that the only successful... No, okay, Russia gets into Ukraine Moscow. Into Moscow actually. and Warsaw. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and London successfully gets into Europe. Oh, Yorkshire. man. Russia's plus one. I know Russia's not plus one. No. Yeah, Russia's plus one, but can't build because oh. everything's full. <laughs> Yeah, and this is Ukraine's the problem with to to Moscow. having an enemy unit in Moscow, you have to cover everything in order to get it out, right? Well, you could have attacked from St. Pete here. That is true. I'm kind of surprised he took from Ukraine. I guess he wants to hold Norway. Tell England, no, 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 England, Norway's mine. And you can see England is not happy about Norway because they try and move back into Norway. Well, they do move back into Norwegian Sea at the same time and as North moving City. up to North. I feel yeah, like trying to it. this take might have been like England's stopping point of saying, why am I All holding right. back France if you're just doing this to me? <laughs> yep, I can't win the game. So, all right, F you, France wins. I'm pissed. Good job, France. Well done, well played. Mm -hmm. Let me go retake Norway. I'll mess with them. Um, winter 1910? Yeah, let's go ahead to the winter. This is uh, Power Rankings turn, but I don't think they've actually changed. Yeah. Um, Probably not. England was last, right? Yeah, the only difference might be we had Russia above Italy before, but I think that's still the same, even. Um, yeah, Russia's two centers ahead of Italy right now. Where, do we, where does Italy get two centers from? Looks tough. Yep. Alright, yeah. well, let's go to spring 1911. The question to me really is, was Italy going to pivot against France? Because I think that has to happen in order for anyone but France to win this game, right? Yeah, but um, that's not happening, so... But they're not... They're, they've decided yeah. not to do that. Um, yep. Spring 1911, it's over. Well, we do actually see 15. England coming back in to fight France. So what I thought about England just like being at their snapping point and going after Russia, they are still trying to prevent France winning the game despite the fact that they now have no shot uh, at it themselves. But yep. I... Yeah, I don't know whether it will be successful. I think it probably won't. <laughs> well, I mean, I do know whether... <laughs> I think it, it definitely won't, by the look of it. Um, yeah, I mean, Russia needs to get multiple centers. Like, I, I think Russia has the tiebreak, right? Um, uh, yeah, everyone has the tie break against France. Um, yeah, so if Russia can somehow squeak out two more centers, but or if Turkey can get three, uh, that would also do it. Um, yeah, but Turkey's not getting three. Yeah, Turkey's been boxed hard now. <laughs> it's a bigger box yeah. than usual, but they have been boxed. Um, yeah, and then Italy needs four. Yeah. Yeah. Well, all right. Well, good fight. Everyone played well. Okay, uh, let's go then, to then, yeah. Fall 1911. We haven't actually ended the game yet. <laughs> okay. Oh, Italy sure. takes Budapest off the Russian. So... Uh, poor Russia. Wait, why did they do that? That just... They need, a, they need centers? Yeah, yeah, but they don't have an army to back that up or anything, right? What? They, they got a center. They got a center, but like... They don't have an army to put down to take Vienna or anything like that. Um, yeah. I guess Turkey has they gotta, fleet they, Bulgaria. They want to win, right? They got to take. They got to take four centers. Where are those four centers coming from? Budapest, Greece, Bulgaria, Romania. To say, hey, everybody, look, France has been an ass the entire game. I was, I was here <laughs> on the corner. I got wrecked since the start. Just give me the win. Screw France, please, please. Mm hmm. Uh, I guess, actually, like, looking at the moveset here, you know Turkey puts their fleet into Romania, moves the army up, right? They've already got fleet Bulgaria. It looks like it's actually pretty decently positioned to uh, to be an Italy-Turkey alliance. Um, like, a last-second, last-ditch, hey, I can't attack you here, you can attack the Russian, just do your thing, I'll do mine, and we'll see if anyone can make it. 
Um. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, obviously they can't make it, so it's going to... The only chance they have to win is by one of them throwing to the other. Mm -hmm. um, Which seems so. unlikely. They have been fighting. <laughs> There's been a certain amount of fighting recently, to be sure. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. let's see. Let's see how to, let's go to the winter. All right. Uh, I'm um, curious what. Oh, North Sea was convoying Norway to Denmark. Okay, let's go to winter 1911 then. Uh, we have a an army Venice build, and that is it, because uh, sure. Budapest was forced disbanded there. We go into spring 1912. Uh, All right. France yeah. covers against anything, yeah. Yeah, I think it's interesting to note that France came out to Cilicia and Bohemia on that turn, like, before. Just trying to influence as much as possible to make sure that, hey, I can stop these people getting centers if they start. <laughs> yeah, I mean, France is at 7, everyone else... Or France is at 10, everyone else is at 7. If anyone looks like they're going to get up to, like, 9 or 9, we can mess with them. Yes. So, just stay safe. Um, and I think France... No, they don't have London Guarantee. Um, but France gets into North Sea, so they do actually have a shot at going up to 11 here. I yeah, don't... they have another guess. Yeah, especially, yeah. like, looking... If a throw was happening, would have definitely started this turn, because I don't think they can throw enough sensors otherwise. So, let's go to the fall. Yeah, I mean, well, Italy can oh. still take Romania, Bulgaria, and Greece. Uh oh, they absolutely can. This and, is true. Vienna, and Vienna, right? So they could get there. But so yeah. if if everyone agrees to throw to Italy, then Italy could still get there. Maybe Russia could have something similar happen, but I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Um, interestingly, France does have a slight position to disrupt that, but I think Italy could protect against everything. Just Tyrolia is a is a nasty. Yeah, space. I don't know about everything because Vienna, right? It, covering Vienna and covering Venice and Trieste need a lot of units. Mm -hmm. Albania covers Trieste, Adriatic covers Venice, but I think Tyrolia could either tap Vienna or support hold it, or tap Bohemia. Right. Yep. Yeah, I don't think it's a guarantee for Italy to go plus four. Um, but they would only need plus three unless France can slip into an English centre. Um, yeah. Alright, let's go to 4, 19, 12 then. Uh, and we see basically a lot of uh, <laughs> duff moves from these players. Like, just... We're done. Um, at least from France. I guess no one else is really entering the, the random orders on that front. Uh, people yep. are still trying. Everyone else making stuff, getting, getting centers, right? Yep, but no one threw, and that meant there wasn't any space for uh, for anyone to beat France. So yeah, and then if we go to winter 1912, we get the final board state. Um, amusingly, with an Italian fleet in Eastern Med just having slipped there at the last second. But yeah, yes. and Western Med. The <laughs> oh yeah, both both Meds. Nice. Very well played. Uh, yes, nice very. Game for everyone. It was a it was a super interesting one. It also like it looks a bit like France walked to victory, especially at the end there. But it was uh, a pretty hard fought game hard through fight. through the uh, yeah through the whole thing, especially oh, yeah. since they got fought back from their position of attacking England, right? Yeah, remember when I was like, "Oh, England's going to be dead in three years." <laughs> that was expecting the convoy, but yep. Uh, I think we have we have now seen that maybe the convoy is the better move than moving into Norwegian Sea. Um, just, I think the Norwegian Sea move combined with the English Channel move would have worked a lot better if, like, it, it could potentially be an effective move, but it requires England to be hard committed with their fleets to the, uh, to the east, like, away from North Sea, so that you actually have some pressure on that province. Um, with the English fleets in North Sea, Skagerrak, Denmark, it was not, it just did not work out. Uh, yeah, but there was a little too much defense. Yeah, but they managed to convert it into a win in the late game, after getting pushed back and then pushing back forward again, uh, just with the German centers instead of the English ones. <laughs> uh, 
Ugh. Yeah, I mean, this is just a France plus Germany, right? All of those centers that Germany normally has and all of the centers that France normally has. Yep. That's 11. That's all that France has, and that's enough to get the win here. Yeah. All right. And solid performances from everyone else. Um, poor <laughs> Russia there managing to get up to a position where they were top of the power rankings at one point. But, uh, yeah. but it is Russia. Top of the power rankings. <laughs> It's Russia, so you can collapse really, really fast, unfortunately. Um, and they yeah. didn't collapse that fast, but, like, they did No, collapse. it was a very slow collapse, um, and then it took Turkey eventually stabbing them to really break Russia. Yep. So that was, that was what did it. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, that will about do us for this one. I need to go and negotiate in my IMDIP game, and I'm sure Ezio has things he needs to do. <laughs> it's been a fantastic final to watch. If you want to watch the uh, the Olympus Season 3 final, you can find their Discord link in the description below. Or if you want to sign up for Olympus Season 4 when that comes around, uh, that will be a lot further down the line, I imagine. But uh, it will come yeah, around eventually. Is. That's going to be a long time coming. <laughs> All right. And of course, you can join our Diplo Strats Discord in, on the link uh, below as well. Right. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.